There's no word on whether the crashes might have been some sort of act of terrorism, but the FBI is investigating that possibility. Good evening. Tonight, I can report to the American people and to the world. The United States has conducted an operation that killed life, Osama liberty, in the pursuit of happiness. Leader of Al Qaeda. It's about time some of you got acquainted I with the real hard the world truth. Unconfirmed reports this morning that a plane has crashed into one of the towers of the World Trade Center. It will be those behind the New World Order. Shortly afterward, another plane hit the other tower, causing another massive explosion. Another social illusion and social engineering project to bring about one world socialist totalitarian government. You are listening to The Last Frequency with hosts Michael Vera and Ryan Gable. Good evening, good morning, wherever you may be. I am Michael Vera and I am here with Ryan Gable and I think well, Ira will be joining us at some point too here. Uh, I want to welcome you all and uh, Ryan, hello. <laughs> hey Michael, it's kind of been a while since we've talked. I mean, with the exception of last week, uh, everybody's been really, really busy. But I, I know Ira will be joining us tonight. Yeah, it has been real busy, real, real busy. I have uh, Adon and Bruce uh, from our chat, many of you know. Uh, are here and uh, they're not exactly right in the studio with me right now but they're right outside of it so at any time I could call them in and they could say hello but I'm not going to do it right this minute um, of course the radio network and you know what we almost had some other bigger things going on which are on hold right now but we do have some new shows uh, that are uh, coming our way shortly we've got that uh, just just a whole bunch of things going on. And, and Ryan, I, I know we've got a guest tonight, so if you wouldn't mind, maybe tell everybody a little bit of what we're in store for uh, here tonight. And then I'd like to comment on, apparently, this Stu Webb and this Jim Fetzner, uh, who, well, they're making claims that they've been run off the road. Well, we've heard that before. I'll get to that. But uh, anyways, uh, Ryan? Okay, our guest tonight is Aaron Murakami. He is the founder of the Energetic Forum and Ener uh, Energy Science Forum. And they are an organizer for Energy Science and Technology, a conference that happens up in Spokane, Washington on the West Coast. And uh, he's also a book publisher, and he's written a couple of books, including The Quantum Key and A Course in Mind Power. He has an invention, one of the world's most efficient plasma ignition systems that, bur I guess it burns water in the engine, and he was awarded a patent for that, but as, as he explained on my show, if you heard him a couple of days ago on the 26th, uh, I guess someone tried to steal that patent from him, and the patent office gave him and this other guy a patent for it. Uh, so a little bit of an issue there, but other than that, Aaron was a wealth of information about, I guess we could call it Tesla sciences, but he's under the impression in the same way that I am that th this idea about Albert Einstein and, and the way that mainstream science operates today, it's really just a, a, a big uh, a big distraction. It's really just a big distortion. And, you know, we never hear about Nikola Tesla. And the times we do hear about him are people that promote the image of Nikola Tesla but really know nothing about the man. They, they misquote, you know, documents. Well, they make stuff up. And uh, this guy, I think, is the real deal in terms of understanding the Tesla sciences and understanding what Tesla stood for and, and also trying to 
you know, really bring new technologies to the table. Uh, I know one thing that they developed was a battery charger that's able to recharge, uh, you know, regular batteries without having to send them to the dump. So that's something they even have on sale now that they've developed. So that's all what we're going to be in for tonight with Aaron. Uh, and then, of course, you know, we'll be discussing, I'm sure, some other news. I've got some stories with uh, yourself and Ira here. All right, great. And what we'll do later on, too, is we'll open lines. Anyone that wants to call in, whatever you want to talk about, as long as you keep it real, otherwise we'll get rid of you. We're not going to play stupid games. But, uh, you know, uh, anybody, whatever you want to get into, within reason, uh, then we would be more than happy to go that route. Now, uh, Ryan, uh, I had uh, some uh, people in the chat asking about uh, asking me if I knew of Stu Webb and uh, Jim Fetzner. Um, don't know much about Fetzner that I could say off firsthand uh, experience, but with Stu Webb, I have had experience with Stu Webb, and I'll tell you right now. In my opinion, the guy is sold out. He's a Fed. He's a uh, listen. When Glenn Kennedy and I were running N Search Radio. And my show was over there. It was when Stu Webb came into the picture when all hell broke loose and everything went to hell in a handbasket. He is an infiltrator. He's disinfo. This is this is my opinion based on my experience. You know, this guy would get on. He'd come on my show and he's oh, they tried to run me off the road and he'd get on his video with his neck brace on and his black eye. What he didn't tell you was that he went out drinking and someone punched him in the puss because he don't know how to shut his mouth. Yeah, that's that's what he don't tell. You. But no, he gets run off the road and all this stuff. He's got all this information. Look, he works with. Gordon Duff. Gordon Duff is a known disinfo agent. I'll I'll fight anybody on that because I know it for a fact. And so you are the company you keep. So Stu Webb, if you believe anything he tells you, then you're too dumb for this show. So change the channel. <laughs> That's all I can say. Anyways, I got that out, Ryan. We can we can oh, move I, along I, now. <laughs> I had my mic muted. I was going. I was talking to myself. I guess uh, I was just saying that I don't really know much about either one of them, so I don't think I could even comment. I just you know know what I've heard from you. Well, and- yeah, he's the one that uses re- he. The, the, what these guys do is they take a piece of reality, like you know, oh, they sacrifice babies. Well, we know that that they're sickos who are doing this, right? Well, he'll use that and say, oh, it's going to be in this place or that place in Denver, Colorado. And what he does and that bald guy does there is what these two do is they they use that to get hits to their websites and to their videos. And what they're really doing is pulling you into a Christian agenda. It's not really Christian, though. What it is, it's their Christianity. <laughs> it's their their religious cult. And that's there's what a name for Yeah, there's a name for it. You just said it's a cult. Yeah, and that's what they're pulling you into. So you think that, oh, I'm getting all this truth. Next thing you know, it's Jesus loves you. Give me all your money. Look, I'm on to these guys. Uh, Stu Webb, Glenn Kennedy, Gordon Duff, this Fetzner guy, all these guys. You know what? I wouldn't wipe my ass with either one of them. They're not worth it. And that's my opinion. I'm just telling you straight fact. I dealt with these guys over at the other now. Not Duff. I know of Duff. I mean, he admitted 40% of what he puts out there is lies. Why would you talk to a guy like that? I Why? I mean, why would you waste your time with someone who admits they lies? Why are you going to waste? Go look up. I've looked up Stu Webb, and I found DWIs and all kinds of stuff. There was a time when I think he was a good guy, but I think that time has well passed. And here's something else. I've got a recording of him and another guy talking, and this guy says, well, Stu, when you worked at Area 51, just like I did, Stu never corrected him. So I don't remember Stu ever telling me about working at Area 51. So it was, does he, look, I don't trust the guy. He's, he's not, he's not, I've had to send a cease and desist to get him off of me uh, before, because when, uh, when I exposed N-Search and Kennedy for what they were doing, um, you know, he didn't like that very much. So, you know, he tried to play hardball with me. But, you know, I have his number. When you got these scumbags' numbers, they can't fight you. They can't do nothing to you. All they could do is put lies out there. They can't confront you because they know you got them by the cojones. I had just like the new Chitelli guy, uh, right by the balls. They know it. And so all they do is they post their garbage and their lies and, and, and they try to feed off other people. 
uh, to fill their own pockets. And I guess I've spent too much time on that already. So I don't know. What do you think, Ryan? Where do you want to go? <laughs> well, there's a couple of things in the news that I thought you might find interesting. Please. That, Anything's that, better than web. <laughs> I covered for my show Sunday. Um, you know, if you just tuned in from Open Eyes Radio, I was on with with Ira and Joe talking about Baltimore as part of this Beltane Festival. And we're going to get into more of that on Saturday. Uh, I've got a two-hour special. I'm going to have a brand new episode about every occult aspect that I can that I've come up with. That'll be airing Saturday here on L and M in the afternoon. And then on Sunday, I've got Courtney Brown from the Remote Viewing uh, Farsight Institute. And in the first hour of that show, I dug into a lot of news, lots of news. And there's a couple of news articles that stood out to me. One of them I went on, I think, a 10-minute just rant about. And I'll read it to you, Michael. Okay. Let me see what you think here. Uh, it's from this article is from cns.com, but the original video is actually from the big CBS, so a big mainstream source. And it says this on April 24th, 2015, on an edition of CBS Evening News, a NASA scientist made a surprising admission about climate change during a report about an erupting volcano in South America. So you saw this volcano in Chile erupt, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so this volcano in Chile erupts. Now, correspondent Michelle Miller, it says, turned to Dr. Allegra Legrande, who detailed how the gases, to pay attention, guys, really closely here, who detailed how the gases from a volcanic eruption can lead to a reduction in the amount of sunlight that reaches the Earth. Mm -hmm. Legrande, who's a NASA scientist, apparently, added that this is a small component of why we're not as warm today as the climate models predicted we would be seven years ago. So what we have here, and I'd like to get your take on this, what we have here that I see is a sinking ship and these people grabbing on to anything that floats to try to, to prop up their argument about global warming or what they now call climate change. These people lie, lie, lie through their teeth. They tell us that they are the experts, that the earth is heating up and that we're all going to die if we don't reverse this process and that it's all our faults. You know, it couldn't be the big international corporations dumping toxic waste into the atmosphere and, 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 and onto the ground. You know, but they act like this is what gets me is that they act as if volcanoes are solely responsible for the decrease in the heating of the earth. And my, my point to that is if these people are really experts if these people are real scientists, why did they, and, and if this is so important, the volcanoes, how, as a scientist, do you not take that into consideration when you're putting together these climate models? Well, I'll but tell you, Ryan, I, I'm happy to see that they're blaming something other than our SUVs at this well, point. Well, because there's absolutely <laughs> no proof for that. So now they're holding yeah. on to any anything that floats to try to hold up this argument. And I don't have an SUV, by the way. I've got two feet. Autumn's got a car. My car, I paid uh, over three grand for the car I have, and uh, a so-called friend uh, decided to go bankrupt before I got the title and uh, screwed me on it. But I still have it. I won't give it to the bank. They send tow trucks trying to find it. But I tell them, well, you break in the gate and I shoot you, so... You know, it's my car. You might as well just give me the title. I'll tell you, I could get on a rant about that, too. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, well, it's all a lie. One is, story is, I've is, run across, not to interrupt you guys. Hi, by the oh, way. Oh, I didn't even know you were. <laughs> oh, One yeah, yeah. I you know across. what? I forgot, too. Hi, Ira. <laughs> <laughs> Um, right now, the automakers are trying to get Congress to pass legislation to make it illegal for people to repair their own vehicles. That's a new one. I did not hear that. Yeah, I can send you the, the link for that one here in a little bit. Yeah, they're, they're trying well, to pass legislation to make it so that you can't work on your own car because the uh, technology is now too complex and it's too dangerous for people to work on. Well, you know what? That's going to oh, work really? as well as telling people they can't smoke marijuana. Oh, that's, <laughs> it's like the people, they say, well, you can't grow your own food. It's an act of terrorism because if you grow a tomato and you give that tomato to your neighbor, your neighbor could get sick. Oh, I'm telling you now, Autumn and I, we're getting ready to hook it up back here. We're about to, we got a nice little yard and stuff. We're about to plant, plant, plant. I dare, I dare some 
law enforcement to come and tell me I got to remove my gardens. You know what? He'll be fertilizing that garden. <laughs> you, you, you should see how it is in Florida. I mean, the people that get arrested for planting their own gardens, you know, it's an act of terrorism. You're you're affecting the economy, national security, national yeah, security. You're growing you're tomatoes. Affecting. You're you're putting the country yeah. at risk. You know, hey, see how the change is, though, too. I mean, during World War One, World War Two, people were encouraged to build their own gardens because it was a victory garden. But now it's terrorism to grow it's your a own terrorism food. garden. Not here, you know, that. and I'm still I still got to say whether it's fake or it could be some fakery. But I got to say I, the governor here, I have some belief in her because she's done well. And ju- they're just putting through legislation that. If passes, and and I think it will, uh, then we're going to be kind of like Georgia over there, and you'll be able to go buy a gun and carry a firearm without a permit. And right now, you can have them in your home without a permit. And, but they're going to make it so if I want to go to church with my gun strapped to me, I could do that. So guess what? You come in my church trying to take somebody out, you're getting shot back at. See, they don't want that in most of these states. So so I'm glad that we've at least got some government in this state that's trying to do something right and keep the Constitution hot. Now, is that are they doing that and then screwing us somewhere else? Probably. But hey, as long as I got my gun, I think I can get out of just about anything. <laughs> they do that in Montana too, don't they? Where you, if you buy a, a gun within Montana, you don't have to have a, a license for that gun or something along those lines. I think so. Now, if you live in New York State, you pretty much got to uh, spend some time under the desk for the mayor there in order to have a gun because you know, they, <laughs> yeah, they try to keep you disarmed, and that's that's the, that's the one thing that this state has going for it. I can't complain about the laws, uh, different uh, laws that are that that exists here and and the the freedom of carry, having a firearm in your home and not worrying about hey you've got a gun in the house you're under arrest you don't have a permit for that you don't need one i could have a gun in my house and if you come in my house and even if you're turned around and you're leaving i could shoot you if you've broken my house i don't have to answer to nobody and say oh uh you know make it look good you broke my window and your dna is there buddy you know, <laughs> that's it it's, you know, it's a fear factor both ways. There's a lot of people who use the argument. They say, oh, if people are carrying guns, you, know, you feel completely unsafe about this. I feel unsafe. And then I think, well, a lot of times people carry guns because they feel unsafe not being armed. So it's a fear factor both ways. You know, guys, just about a week ago, I went to a hockey game. And on the way back from the hockey game, I'm riding my bike. And I pull into my apartment complex, and there's a guy walking in the parking lot. And uh, I didn't think much of it. I thought he lived here. And I put, put my bike away. And as I put my bike away, I have um, underneath like where my bikes are, where my bike is underneath of this like p- parking awning. My apartment's above that, so there's no apartment under mine. It's just parking for cars. And I see this guy who I saw when I pulled in waving to this other guy and these two girls in a in a small SUV to back their vehicle up. And I didn't really think much of it. And I'm standing there, I'm locking my bike up, and then all of a sudden I see them pointing, saying, yeah, that's the one. And I realize what they're doing. As I come upstairs, they pull their car up under my balcony on the second floor. This guy gets on top of the car and starts climbing my balcony. Now, mind you, it's not in broad daylight, but my apartment is right, like right on the street. I mean, you can't get much more unless unless the apartment is like in the middle of the street. It's out there in the open. So they weren't even really trying to hide. I, I gotta I mean, be I gotta be honest. If I ever caught anybody breaking into my house there's 99.9 percent chance you're not going to be alive to talk to the police when they get here and that's just it i don't care if i pull in and you're just jumping out of my window to run i'm running you over if i have to but you're not believing you know, oh, people- that's, that's exactly right that's that's what i was going to do i mean i yelled at the guy i came upstairs i yelled at the guy up the window on the balcony and i said you've got just a second you better let go of that balcony and you better get down in your car or i'm going to discharge my uh, weapon. you know what i would have i hate to say this but i would have took a whiz right out the window on him <laughs> right out the window <laughs> on him there you go the angle that i was at but- <laughs> I, uh, I, 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 I tell you what, if I'd have had a gun in my hand right then, I'd have blown him right off my porch. And, you know, people will say, oh, that's violent. That's violent. That's uncalled for. That's unnecessary. It's like, no, he's breaking into my apartment. 
I'm going to defend myself. I don't need the cops to do that, to fill out paperwork and tell me that you did the right thing by calling the police. Well, no, bottom line they, is you don't belong on a fire escape going up anybody's, you know, into anybody's windows. And, you know, again, that, that's where we people need to understand. We're, we're By the Constitution, we have a right to defend, you know, our family, our own lives, and our property. And, you know, in some states, oh, my God, if you kill somebody, first off, they'll make it racial real quick if, if you're a different race. But, uh, you know, it, it's, that's what I like about well, here. Like I say, the Domino's man will pick you off if you try robbing him here. Yeah, well, here in know, Indiana, go here ahead. in Indiana, we have, uh, we have the laws in place that if we have, you know, somebody breaks into our house, we have the legal right to shoot them without a problem. We can even shoot cops if we want to. If they've broken into their, our home and, and they well, are not announced, all that kind of stuff, we can. We have every legal right to, to defend our home. Well, you know what happens when you shoot the cop. More cops oh, yeah. come in and shoot More, you. So. Yeah. yeah, in fact, uh, one cop told, told me one time, if, uh, if somebody breaks into your home and they're trying to go out and you shoot them, just, just grab their feet, drag them inside, because then, well, they were still inside the house when I shot. I <laughs> hope to God. I, in the back, they were leaving, and that could be construed as attempted murder, too. So you got to be, and depending on where you shoot them. And that's the thing that's really crazy. Someone could break into your house. They could they could murder your kids, and then they could go into the kitchen and accidentally cut themselves on a knife. And they could still sue you and yes. win in your house. Again, and not yes, in this You defend yourself and shoot them. That's murder, and you could go to jail. It, that depends where you are now, again, because in New York, yeah. In South Carolina, no. You broke in my house. Don't matter if it's in the back, if it's in your eyeball, or if it's right up your canal. Right. Well, I'll tell you what. I I, I, told the, I told the guy who was climbing my balcony, I said, if you don't get off, I'm going to discharge my weapon, then I'm going to go to work on you with a knife, so you better get out of here now. And the guy, I, I got the police to come and arrest him finally, but it's just the fact that, you know, when that kind of a thing happens, people are so reliant on law enforcement officials to protect them that they've given up their basic sense of defense and they don't know how to protect or defend themselves or their property or their items. We need well, to yeah. really have a revamping of, 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 of like human spirit and be able to defend ourselves and stop relying on other people to do it for us. Well, exactly. If somebody's breaking into your house, you know, for all the people that are out there about gun control and all this crap, if somebody's breaking into your house, the average police response time, especially depending on where you live, is like 14 minutes long. Yeah, it took that's 14 minutes. minutes. To get here. Yeah, it's, that's 14 to 20 minutes of time for that person to do whatever the hell and, they want to do and, and if you're while in, they're there. And if you're in Baltimore, something like Baltimore, they ain't getting there. They're going to sit back because the mayor says yeah. that they want to give time for destruction. So, yeah. Yeah. And so you, I played that clip for you last night. Yeah, exactly. And hey, I found a, a document uh, that pins uh, this mayor of Baltimore in the same camp with Obama and how their plan is is to militarize the police. How about that? And that's exactly what I said last night. Well, listen, I'll tell you what. This exercise in Baltimore, like I just said on, on Irish show a little bit ago, this is Federalized basically police. Jade Helm. I mean, this is the dividing of the city. It says that in, what, what they were doing with Jade Helm was exactly what's done in Baltimore, dividing the city into districts and using that as a, as a, as a practice time to extract certain dissidents. Uh, this is going to get worse, but not necessarily in Baltimore. It's going to get worse the next time we see this happen. I guarantee you in the next couple of years, you're going to see the military in full force on the streets, and it maybe won't be within the next decade. You'll see the blue helmets, too. Well, I'm that's, telling that's you, it, too. it is coming, and I'm not trying to be some fear monger. I'm not one of those Alex Jones tinfoil hat kind of people, okay? But the truth of the matter is, it is coming. I mean, you don't have to be the smartest guy on the planet or woman on the planet to see what's coming. I mean, with the Jade Helm, it's not just that. They're also doing these same drills in Russia and China and everywhere else. I mean, so everybody's doing it with all their populations because they're all in it together and we're all looking to be enslaved because most of us are afraid to do anything. No, not me. I don't care. Shoot me. As long as at least, at least I die trying. But there's a lot of people who are afraid to, you know, react or they just they're in denial because they hate to have to wreck their their daily routine. And let's face it, soon all our daily routines are going to be destroyed, whether it be by a mushroom cloud or a knock at the door. Well, they won't knock. They'll kick the door. 
Uh, yeah. And like you said, blue helmets. So it'll be blue helmets, green helmets with Russian flags. You'll have uh, green helmets with Chinese flags. You'll have, oh, yeah, they, and the, our American soldiers, they'll be somewhere else being told that they're defending America, but they'll be kept in the dark, probably played pre-recorded videos where they'll think they're watching real American TV while they're overseas. And uh, the whole time, they'll go probably months thinking that everything's okay. And by the time they find out, it's too late. New version of Hanoi Hannah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, we we probably need to take a break here. We've got Aaron Murakami coming up. Yeah, let's take this break, and, and, and then let's get our guest on here tonight. And um, uh, All right. Well, folks, this is The Last Frequency. I'm Michael Vera with Ryan Gable and Ira Robinson, and our guest is... Oh, I who 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 do we got, Ryan? I'm sorry, I don't have it up on my screen here. I'm... It's Aaron Murakami. Aaron Murakami is his name, and I can give you one one of his websites is whitedragonpress.com, and I'm sure he'll give you the rest when he comes on. All right, and I'm pulling up some stuff on him now. I just I I'm, I'm a little unprepared tonight. I'm not going to lie. I just <laughs> it's been one of those uh types of days. But all right, folks, we'll be back in just a few minutes again. This is the last frequency. <laughs> The l and Radio Network offers a moderated chat room at www.LateNightInTheMidlands.com. Just click the chat and listen page from the drop-down menu at the top of any page on the website, or click the Listen Live button at the top of the homepage at www.LateNightInTheMidlands.com. Hello, this is Dick Farrell here to tell you about OxySilver. Legally available only through CureShop.com and HealthyWorldStore.com. Don't be fooled buying silver products from copycats and criminals. You've heard Dr. Leonard Horowitz and experts urge you to avoid deadly vaccinations and illegal operators selling stolen OxySilver and OxySilver copycats. You've heard experts tell you about suppression in alternative medicine and confusing propaganda in healthcare and the truth movement. Read Dr. Horowitz's book, Healing Celebrations, to learn how miracle healings can be made to happen through faith, prayer, and a pure diet. Get great immunity using vitamin C, D, and oxy silver, liquid dentist, GI Flora Pro, a top shelf probiotic. Use Green Harvest as a great tasting meal substitute for energizing organic nutrients and losing weight. And Zeola, a natural clays for detoxifying your body. More advice, all these products and more are available from thecureshop.com including Oxy Silver, the world's most powerful silver hydrosol. Electro Energize to put risky injections, toxic antibiotics, and deadly drug pushers out of business. Oxy Silver is covalently bonded to water. Unlike any other silver product using the frequency of chlorophyll 528, what Dr. Horowitz explains is pure tone love, the universal healer. NASA originally developed covalently body silver hydrosols to keep astronauts healthy in space. Dr. Horowitz added the 528 frequency to NASA's formula and Oxy Silver works three ways to electrocute dangerous germs better than anything, far better than all leading silver products and without any risk. Oxy Silver oxygenates and resonates with 528 for faster healing. So help save lives putting drug lords and criminals out of business and keep the LNM network broadcasting. Register for our free cooperative at healthworldaffiliates.com forward slash 4948. That's healthyworldaffiliates.com forward slash 4948. And buy Oxy Silver and other great products in package specials at great discounts from the cureshop.com buy oxy silver gi floor pro green harvest zeo love and love minerals at great discounts at cureshop.com that's cureshop.com with two p's c-u-r-e-s-h-o-p-p-e.com or call toll free at 1-888-621-7611 that's 1-888-621-7611 do it now the lnm radio network and late night in the midlands depends on you the listener without you there would be no 
know us. So help us continue to bring you the best guests with the best information and subscribe today. Information on becoming an LM subscriber can be found at the top of LateNightInTheMidlands.com. Just click the About Subscriptions tab and become part of the family while helping the truth stay alive. And while you're at it, maybe subscriptions aren't for you. A one-time donation helps as well. Click that Donate button on the right side of LateNightInTheMidlands.com and help us help you. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. say plenty we've got we've got about five of their uh tunes and we use them frequently on uh this network because oh, i like them it's good stuff yeah i like it too i love them yeah and, and i want people to send in more music send it in to me at mv at late night in the midlands dot com and i'd rather use more of uh people's original music that rather than that top 40 or or whatever it might be uh, you know it's i mean i like the other music too but let's face it you know they make it difficult for podcasting and all that so i just as soon have real people real music you know no hollywood puppets and stuff so uh, it works for me but guys we've we got a guest coming on here so we should probably get to that uh ryan you can uh, i don't know if you, you did read off a bio was that the bio or is there more to tell us or it was a part i just kind of gave you a little bit of a background on aaron he was on my show on sunday uh really great guest about free energy i wanted to have him back on you can find that episode of the secret teachings at triple w dot v secret teachings dot info you can download it or stream it for free and the great thing about our different shows here on L and M is that we can have the same guest on, you know, the same week, and it'd be a completely different interview because of the different styles and the different energies for different shows. And that's so, true. Aaron Murakami's background is that basically this: he has, um, you know, he founded the Energetic Forum and Energy Science Forum, which has a combined membership of over one hundred thousand, and is the primary organizer for the Energy Science and Technology Conference. Aaron is committed to the development and distribution of highly disruptive information. He is a former health food store owner and has uh, spearheaded many ventures. He is a consultant to several technology groups, and his books include The Quantum Key and A Course in Mind Power, his invention of the world's most efficient plasma ignition system that actually burns water in an engine, has been awarded a U.S. patent. I know one of his websites is, I, I believe it is, let me check it here, White Dragon Press. That's White dragonpress.com again that's aaron morikami so let's go ahead and see if we can bring aaron on the program all right here we go we're gonna add him right in and uh and we'll get this thing rolling and folks don't forget donate and subscribe we're still not there and we definitely need you so 
hook us up and hit the donate button at latenightinthemidlands.com. And we are ringing. Hello, Aaron here. Hello, Aaron. Hey, this is Ryan, and I'm here with Michael Vera and Ira Robinson on the last frequency. How are you doing tonight? I'm good. How about yourself? I'm doing pretty good. How, how are you guys doing, Michael and Ira? I'm doing fantastic. I want to hear. Uh, I want to hear a lot about this. Uh, this energy. Um, this free energy is always the best, but it's never free, right? Yeah, usually when they say free energy, that means it's, it's uh, not free from the source of the energy. Right. So, and that applies to pretty much all of it. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of terminology issues in this field, and uh, some of those should should be clarified. Yeah, so let's go ahead and start tonight, Aaron. I already read off a bio, and I know a lot of the listeners probably heard you on my show this weekend, uh, the past weekend, but maybe we can get into a little bit about what you do in this field and um, maybe we could start talking a little bit about the misconceptions of free energy and what could be termed the Tesla sciences, if you will. Okay. Okay, well, uh, pre- pretty much my primary um, company is a digital publishing company. So we publish books and videos by various authors uh, and presenters, including myself and some of my partners. And some of these people are recognized as some of the pioneers in the modern-day so-called free energy movement. Uh, These people would include people like Eric Dollard, Peter Lindemann, John Bedini, Jim Murray, and others who have uh, stood the test of time for the last several decades, not just um, presenting theory and ideas and a lot of this stuff, but actually building um, working models that have been demonstrated in front of a lot of people over the years. So they're, they're fairly proven. Uh, what goes hand in hand with the publishing company is there, there's an annual energy conference that uh, this will be the fourth year that, that I've organized it where we have uh, uh, a lot of these presenters come in and, and fortunately a lot of them just happen to be up here in the, in the northwest uh, I'm in Spokane and, and most of them are kind of focused around this area and uh, we basically uh, you know, have about 150 people that fly in from all over the world uh, to, to learn what they have to share and these people include everything from uh, everyone from uh, PhD professors at different universities. There's even some government officials. There's there's laymen, uh, electrical and mechanical engineers, and, and hobbyists. And uh, this year, for the first time, we'll have um, uh, quite a few uh, college students coming. We're, we're able to open it up at this venue for uh, people under 21. So that that looking forward to that to kind of get some of the younger generation going on some of these uh, technologies. And, what kind uh, of technologies are we? Now. What kind of technologies are we dealing with here? Um, everything from uh, unconventional uh, battery charging rejuvenation technologies to um, transmission technologies, which, which are uh, virtually identical to uh, Tesla's uh, ground transmission system. Uh, a lot of people hear about Tesla's wireless energy but it really is like a one-wire system where the ground is the wire. He, he actually was not sending it through the air, it was through the ground. And um, uh, some other things are like electro, uh, kind of like magnetic generators where, for example, a uh, power supply will be putting energy, or AC electricity out in one direction to light bulbs, and most of the energy is captured and sent backwards through it, which negates most of the load to begin with, yet you have... Uh, all the lights lit up. Um, so there's there's different mechanical devices that can uh, pump water with a certain amount of uh, mechanical energy you put in. It, lever- it the, the system basically leverages gravity to be able to turn real gravitational potential into actual work to pump water. And the work done is more than what we had to contribute. And uh, so there's kind of a wide range of uh, technologies. What, what that will be shown... Uh, that will be presented on it at the conference will be a, uh, a fairly interesting water pump. There are a lot of people have heard of HHO, which is electrolyzed water gas, but the application of this is pretty unique where the inventor um, fills a chamber of water and uh, up to about 75%, and the other 25% is filled with uh, this electrolyzed water gas, HHO, if, if you want to call it that. 
and then a plasma ignition, uh, a special form of the ignition system, ignites it. And that gives a powerful explosion that pumps this water out at high pressure um, right out the top, and then it sucks water in from the other way. And it's pumping more water uh, per watt hour, uh, gallons per minute, for less electricity than what's really supposed to be happening. And um, so that, that's kind of a sampling of some of the stuff that we have our hands on. What do you think uh, as far as getting out um, a Tesla-type um, energy that, uh, you know, we, we pay for it once, so we own the unit or what have you, but powers our homes, yeah. powers our vehicles. Do you think that we'll ever get that without taking out the evil empire first? <laughs> um, most likely not, at least not anytime soon. You know, so sometimes I kind of think like these technologies are just going to be kind of uh, held behind the scenes until until there's like a big reset, you know, whatever that reset happens to be, you know, some type of revolution or something. But but it's definitely not going to be anything put out by the big companies. And so little by little, um, you know, these decentralized power units, you know, where each people can, each person can have one at their own home. There are some people moving in that direction on their own with um, upscale versions of some of these technologies, uh, but it's it, but unfortunately it's something that people have to go through a learning curve to kind of understand it, you know, to a certain point to be able to build it, upscale it, and, and kind of do it themselves, which unfortunately is going to be a very small fraction of people, you know, who are going to uh, be able to benefit from that because, uh, you know, it's not going to be practical or or easy to, to put anything like that onto the market and, and market it to the mainstream. Uh, that's one of the reasons why, you know, one of my focuses have been on empowering people with the information to at least um, educate people on the science that, you know, it's not magical. It has, you know, people hear free energy and they group it together with, oh, these, you know, perpetual motion nets, but it has absolutely nothing to do with perpetual motion. You know, none of it violates the laws of physics and, once people can kind of get through some of these barriers and see that these things are, you know, they're really very simple in principle, um, you know, that's, that's the best that I think that can be done. Short, short term is just at least getting people to see the reality and, and giving them the opportunity to learn it enough to start building small little, you know, scale model units to, to at least experiment with and, and see results right on the desk. But, you know, powering a whole home, that's a little ways off. Well, what we were talking about on my show the other day, Aaron, was that this this energy, some of these devices, it's almost like a recycling of of the energy that's put into the device that creates this sense of of unlimited energy. Uh, what, what aspect of that is correct? Is it is it is it a recycling of energy that's put into to a device, or maybe you could explain the details of that? Okay. Yeah, um, that's a perfect analogy for for some of the. Um, uh, for some of the technologies. For example, there's one that's invented by uh, Jim Murray. Uh, he's one of the most important researchers in the world. Unfortunately, not, not a whole lot of people know about him because he stayed kind of lo low-key. But he has a device called SERPS, S-E-R-P-S, which stands for Switched Energy Resonant Power Supply. And what it is is it, it's taking AC from a source, like an AC generator or something, um, and what happens is that this AC goes through a, a transformer, which then sends this AC wave through, for example, a string of incandescent light bulbs or heating resistors if you want to make heat. And um, on the other side of that, it basically captures almost everything that went through it because there's a big misconception that, well, if you power an incandescent light bulb or resistor, that it's eating up or burning up everything that went through it, which is not true. It, it actually only used a very small percentage of it. And so since most of it makes it through, what makes it through the light bulb after the light bulb is lit can be captured in the capacitor. And then it's all about the right switching time where the capacitor is discharged at the very right moment backwards through the bulb, also powering it in reverse because it doesn't matter which direction the electricity is moving for an incandescent bulb. It's AC anyway. And when that AC it, and when that capacitor is discharged through the bulb back to the transformer, it's done in a way where the voltage is stepped up a little bit, which turns the generator into a motor for that moment, which means it's negating the load. And so, um, for example, in that sense, you are recycling electricity because you passed it through the light bulb once, captured it, 
sent that, sent it back through, and you've maybe only lost maybe like one percent of it or something. So you only really have to make up for maybe you know, for example, one percent of that, uh, while ninety nine percent was recaptured and or was captured and reused. You know, so in that sense, you are you know pretty much recycling electricity, and and, and that concept applies to uh, to some of these other um, electrical machines. That's incredible. So now, um, these energy science conferences, I mean, uh, so people uh, go to these and, and see the latest in technology, or, I mean, I, I've had uh, people on the show who uh, one guy literally was running his car off water. Uh, one of our people actually went to go check it out. And so with technologies like this, I just wonder, you know, you know, at what point will we finally get these out? I mean, is somebody going to have to just like give it away in order for it to happen, or, or how is yeah. this? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, a lot, uh, a lot of these technologies. Some of these presenters are focus focusing on um, quite a bit of the information has been put. Not, I, I don't want to say in the public domain because they still own intellectual rights to it and some copy, you know, some copyrights to some of the material. However, even though they've patented some of their devices. They're giving um, uh, hobbyists and people who want to learn about it uh, permission to utilize it for personal use to be able to, le to, to learn about it. And quite a bit of that sharing has gone on in, in one of my forums, Energetic Forum, where a massive amount of information has been shared uh, for people to learn. Um, now these conferences, um, for example, uh, and in, in, in actually, in some of these conferences, I actually um, have most of the same people come back year after year uh, because they're, they're proven and they do have things that work. But, for example, um, let's see, with uh, uh, John Bedini, for example, uh, last year he showed some of his, um, some of his models. Uh, he has a machine called a Bedini SG. It's probably one of the most controversial things because it's so easy to to um, build and to get results, and so many people say, well, you, you know, you're measuring the energy wrong and this and that, although it does have properties that, to it that are supposed to be impossible. But he shares the schematics right there on a whiteboard or, or on the screen in a PowerPoint where you can actually see what it is and, and actually uh, build it. Um, and one of my partners, Peter Lindemann, who worked with John Bellini in the past, um, also showed a demo model, which I actually have on the floor uh, behind me of one of these SGs, where in normal mode, electrically, it can recover maybe like, you know, 95%, of, uh, up to 95% of the energy going through it in, in a battery. But this wheel is spinning the whole, whole time, producing about almost 30% equivalent in mechanical work, which means there's about one point, you know, you could say 120 to 130% work being done demonstrated compared to what's going on the input. And these, you know, these are things that uh, have actually been out there for close to 15 years as far as the schematics to get people going on some of this stuff. Um, and actually thousands of people around the world have replicated these to a certain point, but, you know, most of them are not qualified to really make the measurement, critical measurements, really to see what they're doing. But, um, but the but a lack of information on what direction to go with a lot of these things is, is, is really not the issue because it really is out there. Um, you know, but of course we're, we're, we're hanging in some very small circles. I mean, I have quite a few members in my forum and there's probably maybe five online uh, energy forums that really get into a lot of these particular technologies um, in any serious way where people are constantly sharing their replications and, and reporting on their, uh, you know, successes and failures. And, um, you know, but it seems to be almost kind of like preaching to the choir because there's a lot of people who already believe it that's, you know, moving into this kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, it would be nice if, like, you know, USA Today or something like that would put a front-page story on uh, one of these things, to, <laughs> you know, to bring it out mainstream or on, you know, Oprah well, Winfrey show or well, you know, like that. So, know. sometimes you do see some of these things come out, but then you never see them again. <laughs> yeah, that, that's true, and, and I, I follow quite a few of those. Uh, but one of the common denominators between quite a few is that is that you know there's a difference between an inventor making a claim and actually having other people be able to verify it to see if those claims are accurate because. I see these things that are supposed to be coming on the market and they have these tremendous claims and I'm all for it. You know, I don't know if it works or not, but I'm open to the possibility. 
um, but then it just disappears, and nobody has really had a chance to see what it is and validate for themselves whether those claims were ever true to begin with. A lot of those, I think, are phony, um, but because it just happens too many times. I don't know if these people are just looking for attention or what. Well, but, you're you're right because uh, I know a guy who uh, I call him the bald <laughs> ego here, but he's always this is what he uses to pitch people in. And he says, "Oh, we're working on a new free energy device, and it's going to change the world." And and this has been going on for years. And every time it's like, "Oh, well, you know, we're still working on it," or uh, they're afraid to come right? out. There's always an excuse, anyways. Right. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. That's why I stick with uh, most of the people who uh, who present at my conference. You know, I'm personal friends with them. Um, I know their character and their integrity. Uh, I know the, how they uh, operate their businesses, and you know, I know where their heart is at. And they're the first ones to you know not make any of these grandiose claims. You know, they're, they're open to teaching the principles. Um, you know, they do have uh, some responsibilities to you know some of the investors or or to their company and. And that kind of thing, but they're completely open to sharing sharing the principles that other people can learn from. Because, you know, with um, you know, I mean, they have some profound technologies. You know, for example, Paul Babcock and Jim Murray with the SERPs device. They demonstrated it last year at the conference, where um, the transport it was drawing a net wattage of about one one and a half watts, um, yet it was powering fifty watts of light bulbs. That doesn't mean one one and a half watts or so was powering 50 watts of light bulbs, it means that was the net result of what's drawn from the transformer after the electricity is recycled. So it's really 50 watts is powering 50 watts of bulbs, but by the time you send it back, the gen- the generator is really only having to, to, to put out about one and a half watts or so. You know, so... So now, yeah, what what about uh, what about solar energy? I mean, it seems like that's getting you know better and better. The technologies with it. Do you think that uh, at some point that could be the save all? Um, I do. I'm, I'm I'm a huge fan of solar, and short term, I think that um, for anybody to get off the grid and uh, be energy independent, solar is is the way to go. Except, unfortunately, most of the solar industry is doing it all wrong, in my opinion, and in the opinion of uh, some of my partners um for example you know and, and even when they make um, advances in the solar technology it's still these real, real small tiny incremental steps on the efficiency of the solar panels which they're all you know re- really bad efficiency you know if you're hanging around maybe 20 percent you know if you're lucky um you know that's pretty bad percentage but you know we're driving around in cars that are around the same percentage so um you know it's kind of interesting but in the solar industry the the way that we need to to move is there's a man named Stan um, Obshinsky, I believe, he, or Obshinsky. He was the inventor of the NICAD battery, and he came out with a very super low cost, um, high efficient way of making solar panels by the miles and miles. I mean, this, these like rollers would just roll these things out, and they would just print these long, so called thin film panels. Um, there's thin film panels known as amorphous panels. And um, but there's other ones known as SIGs, C-I-G-S, copper, indium, gallium, selenide panels, which operate both in low light and um, bright, bright light conditions. And his goal was to bring solar out for really, really low cost and basically blanket the world with solar. And it, you know his stuff pr- pretty much just got squashed and and um, and it's like a true case of a suppression. Because if you're looking at, you know, wholesale, you can, you know, if you're buying solar panels in bulk, you know, you can get them for around a dollar, uh, about a dollar per watt. But with his, with his method, it, it seemed like he was able to crank these things out at maybe like 10, 15 cents per watt, which means even, even somebody in a, a low income bracket could afford enough solar panels to do their entire home. You know, where are these panels? You know, it wasn't like a, um, you know, like a, uh, just to claim, I mean, he actually had a manufacturing plant cranking these things out. Now, now it, you know, it's all dried up, disappeared, and and you look at the solar industry, and one one solar manufacturing plant after another is is closing. Um, do, do you see that the idea of alternative energies like geothermal, solar power, 
wind power? Do you think that a lot of the stuff we hear about these alternative energies is really just propaganda and misinformation about the technologies to really give people the idea and the image that, you know, our leaders are really trying. They're trying to come up with alternative forms of energy, but they're really just misleading us about what alternative energy really is. Absolutely. All, all, all the ones at the top, whether they're Democrat or Republican, all work for oil companies, pharmaceutical companies, and the banks. And they have no vested interest in giving us alternative energy. I mean, but, you know, look how many do dollars per gallon is going. The government makes more money in taxes from every gallon of gas than the actual oil companies do. Well, you know, there's there's no way they're ever going to, you know, promote um, alternative or renewable energies in, in any honest way ever. You also you know, get the insurance it. companies involved in it as well, where the insurance companies are saying, oh, well, there's dangers with solar, and and uh, yet then the insurance companies themselves make money off of, you know, fire insurance and all this kind of stuff by having the gas heaters and the gas stoves and the, the uh, right. you know, electric uh, heater, water heaters and all that kind of stuff. You know, there's a vested interest in keeping things as the status quo. Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, even, even look in states like Florida, for example, where – you know, they, they've passed some laws basically making it illegal to get off the grid. Yes, yeah. Exactly. You know, I mean, we're, 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 you know, we're in such an energy crunch and we need all these solutions, yet it's illegal to implement these solutions. <laughs> yeah, and you know it's becoming yeah. popular, too, is these little miniature houses that people are, like, mobile. I mean, not that they got wheels uh -huh. and they're a trailer, but they're they're just these little easy-to-put-together homes and they have a solar panel. And, and yeah, people, uh -huh. uh, the law's been getting on a lot of those because they put them out, you know, in some far into the woods and, and they're set. They don't want you living like that. Yeah, no I'm one's making money off. I'm a huge advocate of the tiny house movement. <laughs> oh, I am too. I'll tell you what. If I was single, if I was by myself, I'd I'd get one. You yep. could get your kids each a house for that. That yep. price. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, you could have walls in between you. How about that? Yeah. 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 Drive well, I'll tell you nuts. what. It's it's um it's a topsy turvy world that we live in with all of this. I know we have to probably take a break, don't we? Yeah, and, and hey, if you want to get even with your neighbor in a few years, you plant a tree close to their house. <laughs> <laughs> a little well, shade. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Anyway, yeah. We're talking with the Aaron Murakami right now on the last frequency, and Michael will go ahead and take us to break here. All and right. We'll be back with more of this discussion. And yes, we will, folks. Don't go anywhere. This is the last frequency on the LNM Radio Network. <laughs> LNM Radio has been joined with the Hardin Structures team to provide state-of-the-art survival shelter design and build services at LNM Radio exclusive rates. Hardin Structures, with over 21 years' experience in military, commercial, and private shelter design, build services, are also offering LNM Radio listeners a free consolation, normally a $500 value. So click on the Hardin Structures banner on the right-hand side of Late Night New Midlands com to receive your special offer today looking to advertise to a large worldwide audience but at an affordable price contact the station at mv at late night in the midlands.com and tell us what you're looking for and we can make it happen that's mv at late night in the midlands.com The LNM Radio Network offers a moderated chat room at www.latenightinthemidlands.com. Just click the chat and listen page from the drop down menu at the top of any page on the website or click the listen live button at the top of the home page at www.latenightinthemidlands.com. 
Hello, this is Lisa Marie here to tell you about Oxy Silver, legally available only through CureShop.com and HealthyWorldStore.com. Don't be fooled buying silver products from copycats and criminals. You've heard Dr. Leonard Horowitz and experts urge you to avoid deadly vaccinations and illegal operators selling stolen Oxy Silver and Oxy Silver copycats. You've heard experts tell you about suppression in all. Alternative medicine and confusing propaganda in healthcare and the truth movement. More advice, all these products and more are available from CureShop.com, including Oxy Silver, the world's most powerful silver hydrosol, electro energized to put risky injections, toxic antibiotics, and deadly drug pushers out of business. Oxy Silver is covalently bonded to water, unlike any other silver product. Using the frequency of chlorophyll 528, what Dr. Horowitz explains is pure tone love, the universal healer. NASA originally developed covalently bonded silver hydrosols to keep astronauts healthy in space. Dr. Horowitz added the 528 frequency to NASA's formula and more. OxySilver works three ways to electrocute dangerous germs better than anything, far better than all leading silver products and without any risks. OxySilver oxygenates and resonates with 528 for faster healing. So help save lives lives, putting drug lords and criminals out of business, and keep the LNM network broadcasting. Register for our free cooperative at HealthyWorldAffiliates.com slash 4948. That's HealthyWorldAffiliates.com slash 4948. And buy OxySilver and other great products in package specials at great discounts from the CureShop.com. Buy OxySilver, GI Flora Pro, 528 Superfood, Zeo Love and Love Minerals at great discounts at CureShop.com. That's CureShop.com with two P's. CureShop. Or call toll free at 1 888 621 7611. That's 1 888 621 7611. Do it now. The LNM Radio Network offers a moderated chat room at www.latenightinthemidlands.com. Just click the chat and listen page from the drop down menu at the top of any page on the website, or click the listen live button at the top of the home page at www.latenightinthemidlands.com. energies i guess you could say uh whether that be solar power whether that be free energy which i really believe exists we know that uh, tesla did some amazing things before uh he was shunned uh so you know that's what we're discussing you're welcome to call in at 
803-317-2264 if you've got a question or a comment. And I'm here with Ryan Gable and Ira Robinson. Ira, we haven't heard a whole lot out of you. Uh, uh, if you'd like to start us off, by all means, go right ahead. Well, one thing that I like um, is the idea that what you guys are doing with all of this is taking things that were um, really pushed forward by Tesla himself and have have built upon it instead of just kind of sticking into the same niche that he filled, basically. You know, so you're taking things forward instead of trying to say that uh, we're just trying to prove what he did was right. You're you're taking it and moving forward with it and and growing from it. And I like that idea with it. Well, thanks. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, a lot of it has to do with also simplifying a lot of what what uh, his work was about. Because um, mo- most of the information, for example, online in a lot of the books, when they when they start talking about his technology, um, is really misinformation. And I, I and I'm not saying that is necessarily intentional. I think it's just a misunderstanding, and uh, everybody starts quoting each other, and pretty soon, you know, the whole the whole story about what he was doing is, uh, you know, built a lot of mystery and, and a lot of misunderstandings. So we want to simplify it and make it accessible to the average person and find different applications. Uh, you know, to choose some of these technologies. Yeah, because not everybody's an engineer. <laughs> right. Yeah, and yep. you know, I don't have a, an engineering background myself either. You know, mostly self-taught, but just kind of paying attention to the, uh, you know, the people who I consider to be the, the the right people to pay attention to. You know, little by little, through you know, a lot of reading, studying, experiments, and through osmosis. You know, one of the been, uh, quite, quite quite a journey. One of the things that I that I thought was really great the last time that I had heard you speak and, and talked to you when I was with Ryan before was you gave a couple of, of really great analogies as to how this this free energy idea and this type of thing that you're talking about, this technology that you're talking sure. about works. I was wondering if you could give a couple of those because they were just really fantastic to get it accessible to people. Sure. Um so with the you know free energy, it's definitely not energy coming out of nothing. It is coming from somewhere, and and free energy really means not you know, it's not a system where more energy is going out than going in. There's more going out than what we have to put in, which means that there has to be extra input coming from somewhere, and that would be the environment, whether it's sun, wind, water, uh, gravity, you know, the ether, you know, whatever source there is. Uh, so one simple analogy would be like a like a little child flying a kite. So for example, let's say a kid's out in the, in the park and uh, he starts running, gets a kite up into the air, and um, if the wind is blowing, he he could essentially just tie tie the uh, kite off to a park bench, walk away, and it'll just continue to fly on its own. So for example, you know, let's say it flies for a certain period of time. Well, um, let's say the child put in 100 parts energy. To uh, of his own effort to, to get the kite into the air. And let's say it flies for a certain period of time and the wind contributed 900 parts energy. So let's say that's a total input of 1,000 parts of energy. Now, let's just say through losses, heat, friction losses, you know, pushing up against gravity and, and everything else, that um, half of that energy, half of the 1,000 parts of energy input, 100 from the trial, 900 from wind is 1,000. So let's just say right off the top, half of that is, is in losses, which would be 50% efficient because if there's uh, 1,000 parts energy went into the system but only 500 parts actually went to having the kite uh, fly, uh, 50% is, is pretty low efficiency. You know, considering we have electrical motors and stuff that are in the high, you know, 90%. So that would be efficiency. However, if... 500 part of energy went to actually flying the kite, which is only a 50% efficiency, what is that 500 parts in work divided by 100 parts that the child had to put in? That's 5, or 5.0 COP, which is called coefficient of performance. The child only had put in 100 parts of energy to get the kite in, into the air. Nature took over, and but he wound up with 500% more energy and actually work being done than what he had to contribute. That's a very valid free energy system showing that the extra energy input came freely from the environment, and that is what would be considered free energy. Um, he's, he's winding up with five times the amount of work 
he had to contribute. There's no vi no uh, violating any laws of physics. There's nothing going against thermodynamics here. Um, but there are different thermodynamic principles that apply. But this is one simple I uh, um, idea of how a little kid has five times the amount of work uh, produced and what he had to contribute. Um, refrigerators, any kind of heat pumps work in the same way. Um, but the thing is, in conventional science, it's taboo to permit the idea that this type of system can extend outside of heat systems, like geothermal pumps, air conditioners, refrigerators. You know, those heat pumps are easily producing two times or more in work compared to what the operator has to put in. You know, some geothermal pumps, you pay a little bit in electricity from the wall to run compressors or, or to pump the fluids, and the rest of the heat freely comes from heat out of the ground going into the water, and that heat winds up, you know, heating our home. And some geothermal heat pumps can be, you know, five, six, seven times more than what we put into it. But it's a big taboo as soon as you start saying that you can do the same thing with electromagnetic systems or even mechanical systems. But I hope that that analogy with a child flying a kite shows that there is really nothing magic to these principles. It has absolutely nothing to do with perpetual motion. And any system where that's putting out more work than what we have to contribute, they are under 100% efficient. But when you look at the total work done compared to only what we have to put in, that's called coefficient of performance, and that's what can be hundreds of percent more than what we had to contribute. And that is a free, that is the definition of what, what these free energy systems are all about. I see. And we have a call. We've got David just in time. You're, you're on. How are you? Just fine, Michael. And uh, good evening, Aaron. I was... I'm always fascinated by uh, programs such as this, which uh, deal with what we all need the most, and that's energy. And uh, um, I'm a lot like you are. I'm 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 a farmer originally from Iowa, so uh, I've been experimenting with different techniques uh, in my lifetime. And uh, um, I'm a big fan of Nikolai Tesla's as well. Um, of course, you're familiar with the 1895 Chicago World's Fair, are you not? Yes. And uh, the way he lit the entire Chicago World's Fair using no wires to the light bulbs. And that was pretty incredible, I, I thought. Um, and uh, um, it, it seems to me that in, in his devices, such as his Tesla, Tesla coils and whatnot, basically what he does is just... Uh, uh, have two two uh, sets of windings of wire, and that transmit the uh, electron flow. But then he uses the, his ground to the earth, which is uh, mm -hmm. uh, the negative side of the uh, uh, of the spin of the electrons, and and then he uses the uh, positive spin to to charge whatever he's going to use, like the light bulbs or uh, an engine or whatever you got that you're going to. Uh, use are are you familiar also with the uh, with the uh, uh, the dynamics of the, the that great pyramid of Giza? Yeah, a lot of the pi piezoelectric properties to these uh, big rocks under pressure. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, what I've what I've read about it is that it had they had a lot of water channels underneath it, and uh, um, what the, it had a gold capstone on the top. And it, it just emitted that same positive charge uh, after the uh, uh, the opposite spin electron was taken down in the water. It just emitted this positive spin electron, and so all the people around could use those clay pot batteries to do their do their uh, their soldering with and uh, uh, put the uh, gold plating and the silver plating on objects. But it seems to me it's it's actually a pretty darn simple process once you understand the, the the differential between let's call it the north spin and south spun electron uh, that you're working with that come together in electricity but you got to separate them so you can transmit just the the positive spin electron well well david um you know i haven't heard that particular variation on the uh, giza pyramid idea with the pots you know being out there as uh, sort of receivers for this energy but I have read, you know, everything from uh, claims that there was a sphere on top of it, or you know, nothing at all. You know, the so-called missing capstone as a as a reference to uh, um, uh, 
the time when, uh, you know, uh, a second coming type of scenario and all kinds of things. But many people do report when they stand up on top of there and raise their arms in the air, they can feel this, this static electric surge and, um, you know, di- different theories on how it was uh, almost kind of like a, uh, you know, d- different forms of a pump, you know, using using the chambers, you know, whether it was with water or, or otherwise. But when you're talking about, the, you know, the, the electrons, uh, and that even comes into if there even is electrons, because the electron theory of electricity is still just an idea, and there's actually more evidence to show that that's not the case than for it. Um, but there is uh, a so-called, you know, there's definitely a so-called electron current that's measurable, um, which is uh, initiated by an etheric, like a polarized etheric flow moving over the surface of the wire. And when you and when you mention like the wireless um, uh, lighting of, of bulbs and stuff with the uh, Tesla type system, it's really a monopolar system. And with right. the ground, it's basically ground transmission where it's self-referencing, and um, the, the concept of where it's self-referencing is, is literally what's known as counter space, uh, to be able to self-reference back to itself, because it is a true monopolar discharge through the ground. Uh, not only is it a monopolar discharge, it's also extra-luminal, which means it, it's, it's, it goes beyond the, the idea of the, the speed of light. Uh, you know, for example, with electromagnetic waves going through the air, for example, with uh, like a radio station, uh, those would be transverse electromagnetic waves, um, and those waves kind of have a, uh, an up and down to them, but right. it diminishes in amplitude as it gets to the end, like an inverse square law, where you know the energy is diminishing over over time. Whereas the ground transmission is known as longitudinal transmission, where there is no loss perpendicular to the direction that it's moving. And um, and actually, with this ground transmission, there's actually something I'm working on with Eric right now called the Crystal Radio Initiative that he launched um, a couple of years ago. Not a whole lot of people took interest in it, but it, it, it basically is the easiest way for people to experience the Tesla-style ground transmission on their own. And um, actually, every AM radio station is broadcasting both through the air with the transverse waves that are limited to the speed of light, and also there's a direct ground transmission component to the AM transmission, which is extra luminal, meaning it does not diminish by the square of the distance, uh, which, you know, for one, proves Tesla right, but it also proves Tesla wrong. And um, we have some, uh, there's some simple circuits that Eric came up with where you can make a crystal radio, for example, use a 50-foot antenna, and you can pick up a station. That's the, uh, the, the transmission in the air using trans transverse electromagnetic waves, which are limited to the speed of light, but then you can turn around and do a Tesla coil version of the crystal radio, plug it into the ground, and you have no antenna, and you can pick it up way stronger. Uh, Not only that, if you have a good ground system, um, Eric uh, Dollard actually did a demo where he wraps uh, about 10 miles worth of ground lines around the radio, Um, but first he held it in the air, and with the... uh, waves coming through the air, he can only receive maybe a couple stations, but the moment he did um, that, uh, received it through the ground transmission, every single station he was thumbing through on the dial, he was picking up stations all across the West Coast, because the transmission from the AM stations are not diminishing by the distance like it does through the air. Right. And that, that and, and th- these were all posted and open sourced on Energetic Forum, and uh, Actually, if you want to see a video, a free video presentation and download a free book on the on this, it's at crystalradioinitiative.com, and it's like an hour and a half presentation by Eric recently when he was up at my house going through these concepts. And if you compare the time, or if you syn- synchronize them up on a on an oscilloscope, for example, to look at the signal you're receiving from the um, air-based uh, speed of light limited uh, electromagnetic waves and you compare it to the reception you're getting from the ground, the ground always gets there quicker. You can see that the one coming through the uh, air at uh, limited at the speed of light is actually slower than the ground transmission, showing that the uh, you know a lot, a lot of these Einsteinian ideas are, are completely false and misleading. But, well, um, it, it's always seemed to me that um, with time, the time element in consideration, mm-hmm. um, as the Earth keeps spinning uh, around... With every revolution, um, 
it seems to me that the gravity effect is increasing and uh, uh, like I say over time so that would indicate to me that the, the earth is the, the negative side of the of the two polarities and that uh, would would give you the, the the functionality of the ground in your electrical circuitry but uh, um, I, 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 I sent you a, an email tonight at whitedragonpress.com info at whitedragonpress.com and I'd just like you to take a look at it when you when you get uh, get off the air or maybe tomorrow sometime I've, I've done an experimentation on my own with this uh, smaller amounts of current but uh, have, have you ever heard the uh, uh, conceptual idea that the Ark of the Covenant was placed in the Great Pyramid at Giza and opened, and that's what the, the, the transmitter was for the electrical current that was uh, present within itself uh, at the time. Yeah, yeah, I'm familiar with a couple variations of that idea where the Ark of the Covenant would, you know, supposedly fit perfectly into the uh, the, the, the coffer in the king's chamber and right, was right. So, somehow acting as a capacitor. Right. You know, some other ideas are talking about it being like an organ accumulator, you know, moving more right, into exactly. the areas of uh, Wil Wilhelm Reich. Exactly. Um, but, but, but I did re read one, one article um, quite a few years ago where the, uh, some Japanese researchers built the Ark of the Covenant um, to scale and layering it with all the materials as depicted in the ancient scriptures, and it did actually um, uh, pro uh, produce a certain amount of electricity. I think it was more of a capacitance of effect where it, absolutely did work as a capacitor, you know, wh whether that was its actual use way back then, I don't know, but um, but I, I do right. kind of, you know, I, re I, read, I, read, direction. I read a similar article, and it said they couldn't put the lid on the box, it kept flying mm -hmm. off, and that was an indication that they had actually achieved, uh, to some degree, what they were trying to uh, 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 Get, but uh, I, that's all the further the article went. It didn't really go into specifics. Sure. But uh, thank you very much. I just wanted to ask you those couple questions and uh, and send, uh, see what your opinion was on those uh, subjects. Okay, well, thank you, David. I'll look forward to your email. Thank you. All right, have a good night, David, and thank you for the call. And uh, David, he emails all my guests, and uh, <laughs> he's he's got ideas. You know, I, he's not. Yeah, he's not far fetched on active. some of it. Yeah, he's very active. We need more activity in, 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 in these movements. It's good to see people yeah. being active. Yeah, it's yeah important Aaron, for people to be field. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, Aaron, I was looking at whitedragonpress.com, one of your websites, and, and I wanted to ask you two things. First of all, what are some of your other websites that listeners can go check out to see some of the stuff that you're working on? Okay. Um, uh, actually, besides White Dragon Press, that was before um, I started consolidating everything into eMediaPress.com, uh, which contains what's in White Dragon Press, but even more. Uh, there's quite a few books and videos by uh, uh, Eric Dollard, uh, some John Bedini technologies, but eMediaPress.com is where to go if uh, anybody wants to um, look for books and videos to study from. If people want to jump in and get their feet wet with actually reading what other builders and open source experimenters are doing um, in relation to a lot of these technologies, uh, go to energeticforum.com. Uh, it's free to register. Um, once the membership is confirmed, you can go in, post, see the attachments. Uh, and I actually recently in that particular forum, um, Dr. Green, Dr. Green, uh, a brilliant uh, researcher that I'm friends with, he's over in uh, Wales, uh, he was doing the uh, radio experiments with the ground and the um, and through the air and comparing the times, and he posted all the graphs showing that the uh, ground transmission is um, a little bit faster than the uh, uh, above ground transmission, you know, meaning ex exceeding light speed, so to speak. Um, but yeah, energetic form is a good place to go. Um, if people actually want to uh, get their hands on a 300-page document with all the posts already compiled with all this, this AM radio stuff, so people can... It's probably the simplest introduction anybody can have to true Tesla-style ground, unipolar ground transmission, this longitudinal ground transmission, you know, so-called faster than the speed of light, is at crystalradioinitiative.com. 
and uh, when they put their name and email in there and confirm the first email that comes just going to the P into down to the PS in, in that first message and there's a link where you can uh, watch the one and a half hour presentation that Eric is giving and, and download that PDF um, you know if, if people want to come and meet some of the um, uh, presenters at the conference uh, you can go to energy science conference.com and uh, you, uh, there's a link for speaker schedule I believe and they can mouse over and go down to the 2015 schedule and um, I, I, I believe you asked earlier Michael about um, you know some of these technologies when they're getting out and and that that kind of thing sure. uh, one of our presenters Graham Gutterson is actually uh, one of the researchers in, in our younger generation here who is a brilliant researcher that um, Actually, his job used to be to uh, travel around the country and verify free energy claims. And um, he said out of all his experience, he only found one that was actually legit, which I can't really mention. But he, um, but at the upcoming conference, he actually has an, uh, a so-called over-unity or free energy disclosure on a transformer he recently uh, developed, which um, and he's going to present and give enough information all the schematics, diagrams, how to do it, how to test it, that people can actually build it themselves. So he's basically giving away the information. And, uh, you know, at minimum, he's, it's uh, putting out twice the amount of energy on this magnetic uh, circuit than, than what he's putting into it. And if there's anybody qualified to uh, be able to test and validate that that is what's happening, it's definitely Graham. And, um, and so little by little, a lot of these presenters, their own websites are going to be... Um, developed little by little so that we can, uh, you know, kind of showcase and, 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 you know, build an encyclopedia of their own work because a lot, lot of them are actually very excited and um, very looking forward to uh, sharing their work with others. What are some of the other topics that maybe you cover or other authors you've published cover? When I'm looking at, mm -hmm. like, whitedragonpress.com, some of the other books that have been published, you know, A Course in Mind Power that you wrote, uh, is that dealing with free energy or is that dealing with some other type of uh, spiritual information? Yeah, that's more of uh, enhancing, you know, so-called uh, psychic awareness in the energy system within our body. And, you know, a lot of it is through some of my own, my own experiences. Um, you know, uh, ha having some various natural gifts, but I'm also a, a, a trained uh, technical remote viewer. And so a lot of the concepts and experiences from my point of view are in there. Um, I think it's quite, you know, if somebody goes to a course of mindpower.com and just kind of read, read the, uh, that, that home page there, that kind of goes into uh, a lot of the experiences and different, different stuff that's happened to me that, um, you know, I don't, I don't see in a lot of the popularized, you know, how to increase your psychic abilities books and <laughs> yeah. you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, uh, so, yeah. Some, some of the other ones, are, there's a book called the quantum key. And that was basically my first effort at developing my own unified field model using absolutely no mathematics, very basic analogies and diagrams that the average person can understand to see that free energy is not magical. There, there, there's really no mystery to it. And once the parameters are understood, for example, the kid flying the kite and how he's you know, coming up with five times more work than what he has to come in because the rest is coming from the environment, once people get these kind of concepts, they can see that that, that it really isn't a, a mystery anymore, and and it's not impossible, and it certainly has nothing to do with so-called perpetual motion. But that's the purpose of the quantum key, and the most important concept in that particular book is um, the concept of open and closed systems. Whereas most of the conventional technologies are based on closed systems, you start with a finite amount of potential energy. That does work, gets dissipated until it winds down and then it's done. Whereas open systems are exactly like the child's kite, where you might have an electromagnetic system that is not a closed loop system. You produce a little bit of uh, input, and then you have extra input coming from the environment. You know, and looking at the idea of, uh, you know, that there really is an ether and that makes up space, then that is the source of the extra potential coming into the system. Even though that's theoretical. The measurements can show that there is extra energy coming out of some of these uh, uh, electrical systems and going in. The exact way that that's happening is still theoretical, but a um, lot, lot of the models that we're working on are closer to, you know, my opinion than, than you know, virtually every ma mainstream idea. Well, 
the way um, I'm, the way I'm seeing things is is it's sort of like the the way that the current systems are set up. It, it's like you're swimming up a up a up hill against the current, whereas with the way that you guys are talking about and and the um, the things that Tesla was doing and proving, it, it's actually turning it around, and you're just going with the flow of the current that's already existent instead of fighting against it, basically. Yeah, exactly. Um, I would consider it either electro, um, like electromagnetic or electrical or even mechanical jujitsu, for example, where you're taking a certain amount of work coming into the system, and there is a reaction, but the reaction helps to produce more forward work. So not only do a lot of these systems, you know, violate a lot of the common mindsets, uh, for example, some of the mechanical amplifiers um, violate the uh, Newton's third law of uh, motion, which is popularly and commonly misunderstood as being an equal and opposite reaction, because in reality, it's the forces, the combined forces are, are divided between two points. And that's a more accurate way to see the third law of motion. So in some of these mechanical systems, you can get part of the machinery to move in one direction. And yes, there is a reaction, but the reaction is set so that it helps to propel it in a forward direction, which means it doesn't buck or oppose it. And so the analogy of you know, swimming upstream is exactly what, what the conventional uh, mindset is geared with... Uh, you know, all the conventional technologies. And, and yeah, we're basically going with the flow. <laughs> hmm, cool. Guys, uh, a- any other uh, questions from either one of you? or Yeah, I have, a, for me? I have a couple more questions for Aaron. You know, since um, David called in and was talking about the pyramids, I thought I'd go yeah. a little bit ancient myself and ask Aaron what he thought about what's been termed the Baghdad battery. Are you familiar with that? And what do you think about it? Yeah, the Baghdad battery, um, uh, I believe it's absolutely legit. You know, it does put out very small current and very small voltage, but it is an example of a, uh, you know, it, it's pretty much an ancient galvanic type cell. You know, it, it will be, there will be chemical processes inside that, that, that you use up or basically break down or change, uh, some of the chemical, um, you know, ke- chemistry in there to produce the electricity. Um, and actually, there might be one that might be even older than the Baghdad battery that um, I discovered on the last summer. So, uh, or actually, it's probably about spring of 2014 when I was putting together my top uh, water fuel secrets uh, for the conference. Um, I discovered an ancient electrolysis process fully described in um, some ancient Sanskrit writings, uh, I believe known as Agatha. It's, it's something like that. It, these references are all in the uh, uh, energetic form. Augustaya, I think, and he was like an ancient sage, and he wrote in full detail explaining how to build a, um, basically a battery, and uh, people have replicated that exact for- formula for putting the battery together, and it was putting out, I think, maybe, maybe a little bit stronger than the uh, Baghdad battery. Not only that, he's talking about putting like a hundred of these in series, really cranking out the, uh, the upping the voltage and splitting water to get hydrogen and oxygen to separate. But they didn't call it hydrogen oxygen. They, they had different terminology for the gases. But then taking those gases, filling up a balloon to go into aerial flight uh, up into the sky. And this is a couple thousand years B.C. Wow, that's pretty incredible. What do you guys think about that? You that know, is I... amazing, and it really does testify to what what you and I talk about sometimes, Ryan. That the ancients really knew their stuff a lot more than we give them credit for. Yeah, you know what? Also, I wanted to throw this at you, Aaron. There's a lot of stories, uh, ancient cultures, for example. We spoke about this last week on this show uh, in Peru, dating back about 4,000 years, scientists and archaeologists have looked at this, uh, these artifacts, um, they're made of smelted platinum, and they were trying to figure out how a primitive culture was able to, you know, obtain the energy necessary to, to melt that metal, and uh, mm-hmm. in some cases, we find you know small uh, steel cubes with gold wires run through them. Do you think that maybe the ancient people had a really good understanding of, of of some variation of this form of energy, and they were able to 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 access it and able to obtain this type of of, of heat? 
Yes, and I and I and I don't know if necessarily they even discovered it on on their own. I mean, there, there's been different peaks in civilization in uh, ancient times, you know, doing all kinds of uh, with all kinds of technological marvels that exceed what we're even able to do today. And um, uh, but but I think some some of the advancements back then also led to a lot of the demise of some of the ancient cultures. I think they wound up blowing themselves up. You know, in certain areas, like for example, outside of New Delhi, there's you know a place where there's uh, evidence that there was basically a nuclear blast with, with the same type of atomic weaponry that we have uh, in this century, this past century. Oh yeah, we've seen a lot of evidence radio. of that. Yeah, there's evidence yeah, in that, Indiana yeah. here that that happened as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but I kind of think so, some some of the uh, ancient knowledge um, definitely came from somewhere else. What, what what do you think about, you know, putting everything into context with what we spoke about tonight, what we spoke about on the show on Sunday, on my show, The Secret Teachings, what can people do to, I guess, spread awareness of this? What what can they do to take a part in this? I mean, do you have to be a child prodigy to, to dive into the field of, I guess, what we could call, quote, unquote, free energy, or is this something that, you know, anybody can really learn and access and, and have open access to? What, what can we do to really promote this, uh, this information and to get on track for future generations? Well, there's, there, there's things for people at every level. Certainly a lot of the Eric Dollar Tesla stuff is uh, uh, pretty advanced, but even with this Crystal Radio Initiative, um, you know, the, the basic thing in there is a crystal radio, you know, start, starting with a crystal radio, because that is a free energy device where the operator doesn't supply the uh, energy to power it. It's actually powered by the AM um, transmission uh, itself. Uh, but in there, there's uh, a couple steps into doing a small-scale little Tesla coil for this crystal radio, for example, but not just to be able to receive the ground transmission, but to be able to light uh, start off lighting like teeny t- tiny little bulbs, uh, little in- uh, incandescent uh, bulbs, and then little by little scaling it up. And that whole challenge is to build up to you know be able to draw 100 watts. Um, you know the, the the radio station is paying paying for the energy. So you know whether we want to see it's free energy or not, it's kind of kind of proving a concept. But just on a small scale, you know e- even a child with uh, you know a parent who doesn't have a whole lot of background can at least you know, move in the direction of, of building one of these things. Probably the most popular device ever replicated by people, even without much background, uh, is known as a Bedini SG. That stands for schoolgirl, because um, about 15, yes, yeah, about 15 years ago, um, John Bedini and his electronics company was at one end of a building, and at the other end, uh, there was this uh, guy who worked there, and his daughter was entering a science fair. She was 10 years old. So they went to John Bedini to ask um, if he knew anything that would um, be a good project. And so he designed this little circuit with a little wheel with some magnets on it and a little coil underneath and um, had a little generator coil to light an LED. And uh, this thing just kept running and running and running way longer than than, uh, what would be predicted under normal circumstances. And she basically won the grand prize at the science fair. And so ever since, that particular um, circuit was... uh, named the, the Bedini SG, short for schoolgirl. But at BediniSG.com, um, that's uh, like a three-part book series. That's probably the, one of the easiest um, devices people can build to experience recycling electricity, for example, because the electromagnetic coil charges. You put electricity to power this electromagnetic coil, charge it up, make a magnetic field, and that turns the, the wheel with magnets on it. And when the switch turns off, the magnetic field collapses, and you get this high-voltage spike coming out, which conventionally, these spikes are usually suppressed under normal technologies, but that spike can either go to charge another battery, which is recycling the energy, or build it up in a capacitor uh, to you know, power little lights and stuff like that. So it's probably one of the simplest ways for people to actually experience the concepts of recycling electricity it is the Bedini SG. And if anybody wants to learn more about that, on BediniSG.com, scroll down, and there's like a free uh, explanation PDF you can download. I don't know, it's maybe 10 pages or something, but it has like the introduction to the, the chapter in one of the first books and kind of gives an explanation that, that should be enough for, for the average person to kind of see what it's about to see if that's something they want to tinker with. 
Um, the first SG I made was about 15 years ago, shortly after I first met John Bedini. And um, I don't know, it probably cost me about less than $10 to make. I used a wheel off of a pair of uh, a pink roller skate wheel off a pair of roller skates that cost about two bucks for the good wheel. A couple of the components really didn't cost much, and it, I just had to get a little bit of wire and put it together on a board. And uh, I didn't even know what a transistor was at that time. I just followed the diagram and I just connected the, the dots and soldered the stuff together, hooked it to a battery, spun the wheel, and it worked on the first try. And, uh, you know, so that, that's, you know, pr probably one of the best entry entryways would be either the Crystal Radio Initiative and or the Bedini SG uh, for people to get into it. And the Bedini SG is actually a variation of a Tesla technology. It, it is a form of miniaturized Tesla technology. And Aaron, I have a question from the chat room tonight. Come, this comes sure. from Bear, and Bear says that he's under the impression that under the U.S. patent law, solar panels can only output 25 percent of what they're actually capable of uh, as a measure to protect the present infrastructure. Do you know anything about that? Well, uh, that's that's interesting. Um, I think it's close to 25 percent. Um, I don't know if it's the same way he's he's looking at it or what he's referencing, but um, a few years ago, uh, one of the members in Energetic Forum posted a document, which was an actual government document, and it described that uh, solar technology was not to exceed 20-something percent. And I saw that, and, and, and I mean, it, it's, an, it's a legitimate document. It would probably take me a few hours to look it up in the forum. But I did specifically read that that there was a limitation to the permissible amount of efficiency in a solar panel. So it's just open oppression of, of the alternative technologies that already exist. Yeah, absolutely. And and even recently, you know, and it's been known for quite some time that there's you know so many thousands of patents that that are um, uh, uh, covered up and suppressed for you know so-called national security reasons and that kind of stuff. But even more recently, within the last year or so. Um, I can't remember what the office is called, but there's a whole program within the patent office itself to analyze and actively suppress uh, technologies um, uh, relating to these uh, relating to this. Oh yeah, they just refuse to give out patents to people that that present the technology, don't they? I mean, if well, if there's something of super serious, uh, let's let's say disruptive um, potential. Uh, the inventor will probably just get a gag order, and it will just be owned by the uh, government and passed over to the military and sat on and either used for the military or never at all. Well, and, I mean, have, uh, just so, yeah. have any of your people ever received – I've heard stories, of course. You can't always corroborate them. Have you guys ever received maybe a notice uh, that the work you're doing is a threat to national security, any type of cease and desist order like that? No. Um, actually, we had uh, somebody from the Pentagon come to our conference two years ago. Really? Yeah, well, I mean, I know there's a lot of people, I think, in government that want this information to come out, but there's so much, uh, you know, this, there's so much yes. confusion and compartmentalization that it's like when we, when we yeah. think of, we think of humans, you know, humans come from different, different races, different backgrounds, they have different agendas. And when we think of, you know, maybe extraterrestrials, we, we tend to group them all together and we think, oh, they're either all good or they're all bad. When in reality, mm -hmm. they're just, it could be a variation just like we are here on Earth. And when we look at the right. government, we tend we tend to look at them the same way. We think, oh, they're all trying to suppress this. Well, I think there's a lot of people that want this information to come out. And, I mean, I think that that's sure. something that maybe you guys are experiencing as well, especially if somebody from the Pentagon came. You know, they could have come for another reason, but maybe yeah. it was for sure. that reason. Yeah, they, they, they talked to uh, one of my presenters, and that, that's all I can really say about that. And it's, not, you know, not my business to go, in, go into all that. But, um, however... Uh, I mean, even an energetic forum, you know, be, being a moderator and, uh, and uh, one of the owners of the, uh, of the site, you know, I can see, you know, requests from people to activate memberships and stuff like that. And be, be surprised how many .gov or .mil or dot, you know, or uh, uh, yeah, NASA emails and stuff like that are uh, coming into there. And, and a lot of the people, you know, I'm sure some of them are coming in, you know, to, just for their just for entertainment, but I think a lot of them do have a serious interest in it and see that, that a lot of it is, is you know, pretty valid. And I think even at, at a lot of the high, higher levels and different, uh, you know, the departments within the government and military that they do want these things to kind of come out. But I don't know. It, it's, you know, I, I think most of it is, is just no, normal uh, corporate greed and suppression that they don't want to upset the apple cart and you don't want to have anybody be independent. 
you know, you got to have everybody plugged into a grid, have a meter on it, monitor and, and, and charge people a recurring fee for energy that you have to use um, and, and keep repurchasing every month, you know, which totally goes against, you know, the, the whole ideas of the free energy technologies that, that you can put in a little bit and, you know, leverage excess from the environment. Um, you know, there are some technologies in, in, in this field that I think, you know, should definitely never be in the public's hands because they, they, they can be too dangerous um, or even weaponized or something, you know. I mean, that, you know, out of the, some of the different radical groups that are, you know, always in the headlines these days, who knows how much of that is all propaganda, which I know, you know, probably quite a bit is, but, but there are uh, some, you know, that cases out there who would, uh, you know, I know I wouldn't want them to have some unlimited energy supply in their hands you know, because of what, what could potentially be done with it. But, but a lot of these things have just been kept kind of, you know, small scale, um, you know, proof, proof of concept. You know, a lot of the things that we're dealing with, you know, we've been focused, you know, a lot of us more on, more on the science and, and learning and, and educating on it. And, um, and you know, wh whether we've been asked to stop, the, the answer is no, but, we ha but I have received some, you know, different threats from different individuals who are causing problems and putting out propaganda and stuff like that because, you know, I exposed them as frauds or people who are trying to sabotage some of this work. Uh, you know, one of them is a real uh, radical element who's uh, living in Manhattan, and uh, we're watching him very closely. He's a complete psychopath. Um, but uh, my friend John Bedini, uh, probably about, I don't know, 25, almost 30 years ago, he, uh, he had a uh, couple guys in suits come to a shop, put a gun to his chest, and told him, uh, you know, we're going to be buying gasoline for the rest of our lives. You know? So, yeah, so those kind of things, yeah, those threats do exist. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, I, and, I, and I think part, part of the main reason why nobody's really bothering us is because it's been kept more to an informational kind of thing and small scale. We're not, um, you know, trying to put a million, you know, home energy units on the market to, you, you know, have everybody disconnect from the power company all at once or anything like that. So, so at that point, I think we're safe. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> just, good. That's that, good. You know, even though one of the greatest things I'd love to see is for, you know, everybody to be able to disconnect all at once, you know, to, you know, break the chains. Starve the greedy, power hungry mongers at the fear mongers <laughs> at the top of the pyramid. I'll tell you that. Um, I, I really enjoyed the conversation tonight. And if anybody would like to hear more of you, Aaron, they can go to my website, thesecretteachings.info, and they can access the show archive. And it is the 42614 episode where uh, you and I talked for about an hour and a half to two hours on these subjects and a lot more. You can download or stream that show for free from thesecretteachings.info. Aaron, your website's emediapress.com, also whitedragonpress.com. Hey, you've got a couple of minutes here before we have to take a break. Is there anything else you'd like to say and anything else that you would like to uh, promote in terms of your websites or your work? Uh, let's see. I'd like to um, share Eric Dollard's website. Um, Eric Dollard is the only man alive who's ever truly replicated Tesla's um, so-called wireless transmission technology and has even made improvements upon it. And uh, he has a very important technology known as an advanced seismic warning system where we just saw the destruction in Nepal well his technology can actually predict earthquake 6.0 and above up to 48 hours ahead of time and can literally save thousands and thousands of lives uh, we do have an Indiegogo campaign right now for him to try to raise some funds to, to move that forward it's not theoretical he had a big installation in Landers California which was basically stolen in the real estate scam and a lot of his stuff was looted and, and he's making good progress redoing this on government land right now uh, near town where he's at so it can't be tampered with. And um, if anybody can go to Eric P. Dollard, uh, P for Paul, Dollard is D-O-L-L-A-R-D, EricPDollard.com, on there there's a link to, uh, to the uh, Seismic Warning uh, campaign. And if anybody can uh, support his work, um, it's real, it's legitimate. I've been in those lab many times. I know the lines that these uh, transmission systems are going on to to pick up these earth signals. And um, if anybody can support, do whatever they can to support his work, it is one of the most important uh, life-saving technologies, truly based on the real Tesla technology. And, That's uh, great. 
And, and for all the listeners out there, I'll have Eric Dollard on the secret teachings coming up. Not this Sunday. It's either going to be the 10th or the 17th of May is when that episode will air. So I've got Eric Dollard on for about, I think, about an hour and 45 minutes we did an interview for. So that's coming up. You'll hear him on the secret teachings. Uh, Aaron, anything else? Uh, no, I'd just like to um, thank you and uh, uh, for the opportunity to be on here and just kind of share this with people to kind of get it outside of my network. You know, I think it's time and... Uh, uh, the work you, you guys are doing is is awesome. You know, I took a little bit of time during the break lo- looking through your website, and there's definitely a lot of things that you're talking about that I'm that, that I'm uh, very much interested in, and what work with people who are very, you know very like minded. So I think just building these networks and, and keeping this going is you know one of the most important things we can do right now. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate it, Aaron, and uh, we've got you linked up over on my website at latenightinthemidlands.com, and we'll keep you linked up there on our links page, and I appreciate having you on tonight. Uh, Ira? I have had a really interesting time listening to you once again. I, I'm really appreciative of the work that you do. It's it's really amazing. I'm looking forward to what you guys come out with in the future as well. Th- this is definitely just kind of in the infancy, I think. Well, awesome. Well, Ryan, Michael, Ira, th- thank you so much again. I appreciate it. Much gratitude. And uh, um, anytime you'd like to have me on or a- any of the, the other speakers and presenters who have the other books and videos, uh, anything of interest, uh, let me know, and I'll, I'll do what I can to um, see what they'd like to share with your audience. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate it. Ryan, anything you want to get out there before uh, we say goodbye? Nope, I just wanted to thank Aaron. You know, thanks for spending the time on the show today and my show on Sunday. And thanks for setting me up with Eric Dollard. That's another great interview that, again, the listeners will hear here in a couple of weeks. If they want to hear more of you, once again, you can go to my website where you can find a link on Michael's website and you can download the show that we did on the 26th of April. Other than that, Aaron, have a really good night and thanks again for joining us. Hey, my pleasure. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. All right. Good night now. All right. Uh, all I can say is that we we praise the Lord. We praise the <laughs> Lord that we get some donations. And we praise the Lord that we stay here on the air. Pray, amen. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Put, praise him. Praise him. Praise any of them. There's a lot of them, right, Ryan? There's a lot of them. I don't want to get into Do you want me to start naming them? (laughs) (laughs) No, not really. We've only got an hour left. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. we only got an hour left. All right, let's take a break here, and then uh, we're going to come back. And, and, you know, as a matter of fact, let's hold off on the break. The hell with it. And... uh, uh, well, we, what I'd like to do is I'd like to welcome uh, Bruce. Now, I'm going to try something here. If you can't hear them well on my microphone, then I'm going to bring in another microphone here. And I don't know if it'll mess up sound or echo or whatever. So we'll try it this way first. And uh, if if you tell me in the chat that they're too low, then I will get the other microphone uh, in their hands. But uh, So let's do that. And uh, oh, hold on a second, everyone. Yes, Adana, and uh, welcome. Here, here comes Adana now. And uh, Adana, say hello. Everybody's been wanting to hear from you. Hello, everybody. Hello. <laughs> hey, we had a great trip down, except for a few minor difficulties, which happened to be the air conditioning went. Yeah. And hello, <laughs> all my friends on the chat room. I love you all. <laughs> it's so hello, nice to Bruce. hear your voice, Adana. Hello. Hey, folks, how are you doing? Um, like Adana said, we had a few minor difficulties on our way down, but we somehow survived. And the car is going to be getting repaired tomorrow, <laughs> Some somehow. So all you guys have a health, healthy, safe day tomorrow uh <clears throat> adana and i are going to retire back to our hotel and conk out <laughs> and if anybody wants to come and visit south carolina come stay with michael and autumn you'll have a great time <laughs> and she's a good cook be careful who you invite yeah, we have the most delicious southern fried cooking that you could ever imagine of course i'm only See kidding <laughs> no uh, nice seeing you. It was a wonderful meal, and we really, really enjoyed it. 
All right. Well, hey, love you guys, and uh, we'll see you again tomorrow. And uh, thank you for popping in because uh, they've been they've been calling for you. Oh, really? so. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Yeah. All right, guys. Have a great night. Thank you. All right, everyone. Bruce and Adana. Yeah, we've we've had a great day today. That's part of why. Um, I just came on and, you know, I didn't have everything ready, but it's okay because, you know, it's, uh, it was fun. It's fun seeing them and they're not going anywhere yet. Uh, I mean, they're going back to their hotel tonight, but, uh, uh, they're, they're going to be around for, uh, the rest of the week. I know, and maybe longer, who knows? And, uh, so, uh, it's good having them here. And Adana brought me some Pudgy's pizza. I got some pizza from back home and, uh, I'll tell you what, you know, they just don't, they just don't make pizza like that here. They just do not make it like that here. But, uh, and I still got some in the fridge. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm budgeting it better than money. <laughs> <laughs> a bite here, a bite there. Got to save more for next week. <laughs> yeah. You're going to be like, you're going to be like Homer Simpson with that sandwich that like lasted forever. Right? <laughs> exactly. And, and I praised, I praised the Lord uh, and, and my pudgies was delivered. Praise that oh, holy pudgies. I did, yeah, the holy pudgy. You know, it used to be called skinnies, and then uh, some years went by. This is no lie. And then the guy got uh, chubby, so he changed the name to pudgies. That's a, <laughs> uh, that's the story behind it. I, too, too much eating his own pizza, huh? Yeah, well, it is good. It's it's really good. I mean, and there's a lot of great places in, in Rochester to get pizza. Uh, I mean, come on, it's only an hour away from Buffalo. I mean, don't get no better than that, but... Um, you know, so, but they brought me a little piece of home and boy, it tasted good. It tasted really good. But, uh, guys, we've got, uh, we got about an hour here. Um, so I wanted them to say hello. So now let's take that break and then we'll come <laughs> back and, uh, we'll go wherever you want. And, uh, folks are welcome to call in at 803-317-2264. So, uh, folks, we'll be back in just a few minutes. This is the last frequency. And, yeah, the weather's been beautiful here in South Carolina. Just absolutely beautiful. We'll be right back. <laughs> Radio has joined with the Hardened Structures team to provide state-of-the-art survival shelter design and build services at LNM Radio exclusive rates. Hardened Structures, with over 21 years' experience in military, commercial, and private shelter design build services, are also offering LNM Radio listeners a free consultation, normally a $500 value. So click on the Hardened Structures banner on the home page or the chat and listen page and have peace of mind that no matter what happens your family is protected talk to you soon thank you the lnm radio network offers a moderated chat room at www.latenightinthemidlands.com just click the chat and listen page from the drop down menu at the top of any page on the website or click the listen live button at the top of the home page at www.latenightinthemidlands.com the midlands.com want to be a guest on late night in the midlands.com well you don't have to have the big name and the big books and of course the movies and videos all you need to do is contact me at mv at late night in the midlands.com tell me what you got to offer and let's see if we could make this thing happen again that's mv at late night in the midlands.com Hello, this is Michael Vera here to tell you about Oxy Silver, legally available only through CureShop.com and HealthyWorldStore.com. Don't be fooled buying silver products from copycats and criminals. 
NASA originally developed covalently bonded silver hydrosols to keep astronauts healthy in space. Dr. Horowitz added the 528 frequency to NASA's formula and more. OxySilver works three ways to electrocute dangerous germs better than anything, far better than the leading silver products and without any risks. OxySilver oxygenates and resonates with 528 for faster healing. So help save lives, putting drug lords and criminals out of business, and keep the LNM network broadcasting. Register for our free cooperative at HealthyWorldAffiliates.com, 4948. That's HealthyWorldAffiliates.com, 4948. And buy OxySilver and other great products and package specials at great discounts from TheCureShop.com. Buy OxySilver, GI Flora Pro, Green Harvest, Zeolove, and love minerals at great discounts at cureshop.com. That's cureshop.com with two P's. Cureshop.com. Or call toll free at 1 888 621 7611. That's 1 888 621 7611. Do it now. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. I know that some of you do it just just for fun because you're hoping to get a reaction. Others of you are truly, truly brainwashed. Please do not come into the chat trying to spread the word of the Lord. Because <laughs> while I have nothing against the Lord, I have something against people who just don't shut up about it. And so please do not come in trying to... Oh, Sean, you're brainwashing on the rest of us. And that's not to say that there's not a God. No, I want to get that straight. But when it comes to my chat room, I am the Lord of that chat. And so when I ask you to stop, you stop. And and I already know who we had visiting us tonight. I big shout out to the doc. It was and, a PhD. Oh, uh, it was a PhD. It was indeed. Yeah, I, that's what I was doing on a break, taking a good look. And because uh, he just put up some more new stuff on on yours truly, so he had to come in and and of course because that was his big pet peeve is people who believed in the Lord, um, because when Peter Kling would be on, he would always make a note to call in and and interrupt it totally because he don't like to, when you some people if you start talking about the Lord. Their, their ears start smoking and they start burning. And if you throw the holy water on them, my God, they shrink like, like witches. But, you know, for me, I, look, I, I, I go by facts and I don't need nobody telling. You know, I used to live next to a Jehovah Witness once. And this Jehovah Witness used to come out and preach to me what was right and what was wrong and try to tell me what was wrong in my life. And, you know, 
Where is that Jehovah Witness today, I wonder? I don't know, but uh, but yeah, no no Bible thumping. Just like we wouldn't have somebody come in and promoting Satanism. We don't want anybody coming in and promoting their religion because we just don't roll that way. I mean, that's great for you. If you're Catholic, if you're Jewish, if you're a Christian or a Muslim or whatever the hell you are, that's all well and good with me. I have no problem with that. Me, I'm Michael Vera. I believe in a spiritual side. I believe in a creation. I'm not going to put two legs and two arms on it, though, because I don't know about all that. So, uh, But, you know, it is what it is. You, you know, that, that whole discussion about Yahweh, that really just gets on my nerves like you wouldn't believe. Yahweh is identified in the Gnostic scriptures as being the Demiurge, as being the lesser of the gods, as being the false prophet, as being the one who created this fake reality. The ones that we are taught to worship as being the good, uh, they're actually the very opposite of good. They are the very demonic entities for which those institutions promote as needing to fight against. Yahweh was a very angry storm god who wanted sacrifice and wanted the blood to be spilt in his name. He was angry and selfish and really one of the first terrorists of his day with threats and and, and political uh, threats for violence and and, and sacrifice. So Yahweh was actually a very, very angry storm god, uh, uh, one of the first terrorists, I think, and also, as I said, in the Gnostic scriptures, which the church vehemently opposes, and they came before a lot of the church's teachings, they claim that Yahweh is actually one of the original Demiurges, which was the false kind of leader of the Archons that was like a biological uh, computer system, almost like a cyborg that created this fake physical reality. So I just wanted people to be aware of that, that you know, people run around screaming, Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. Remember that Yahweh is a name that must not be said, very similar to Harry Potter and Lord Voldemort. I think that there's a correlation between the two, the name that shall not be said. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, uh, if you go back into the actual uh, further texts on things, um, Yahweh... Jira had that one on me on this one. (laughs) No, not necessarily. But uh, if you look further, what you find is is the storyline that takes place during the, the Canaanite era... Uh, and even going back a little bit further into the Akkadian area, um, Jehovah, Yahweh, was uh, the brother to Baal, and uh, Jehovah was married to Ishtar. Baal, basically, um, or Baal or Baal, however you want to pronounce it, uh, had an affair with Ishtar, and this is what basically started the big quote unquote war between these three gods essentially uh that is why throughout the the biblical texts in the old testament you see uh yahweh being adamantly against ba- uh, baal and any of his followers but, you know and, and, but instance, I, ishtar i have to say how do you know any of that's true how do well, you know? I don't know it's true, but I'm saying that's what the texts yeah. say. That, that's the history. That, yeah, the that's what the ancient texts say. That's what the mythologies say. You know, things have been changed for certain political and, 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 and you know, political reasons, well, belief systems. But what we're trying to do is take these stories and kind of take them to the present day and associate what happens today with what these stories say and then try to examine them in a historical context to understand, uh, like Ira and I did on Irish show tonight, what's happening in Baltimore, and trying to understand why certain symbols are used, why certain names are used, and a lot of this has to do with energy and rituals on a level that you know it takes a while to really begin to shed the skin of this this false reality, so that you can see what's really going on. You know, I'm not saying that it's true, like it physically happened, but it could be an analogy for something else. Mm-hmm. Right. And and I guess what I'm saying is that if, if all civilization just got wiped out right now and a new species came, say, in 2,000 years from now, and they opened up our history books, they would have nothing but lies. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, that's actually, on both of your points, you both are actually right, because you're saying opening up our history books in 2,000 years, all they're going to have is lies. Well, looking back at these mythologies and looking back at the stories and ancient texts, whether the, the Rig Veda, the Mahabharata, the Gnostic scriptures, the Book of Zian, 
all of these stories have been changed and altered by conquering civilizations, perhaps by the very gods themselves, as they call themselves gods, that these stories have been altered from the beginning. So when we open them up now, this is where, and this is, we talked to M. Don Shorn about this last week, guys, if you remember this. We were talking about how this, con- this creates the confusing stories where Queen Isis in Egypt, her brother is also her husband, and her husband is also her son, and it creates just, uh, just, a, just a complete whitewash of what the truth really is, and it mixes mythology with uh, historized concepts, and it creates just mass confusion so nobody knows what the truth is. And 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 here we go. I'll get out there a little bit, but let's face it. We've had people, so-called whistleblowers, who have come forward and talked about time travel. Now, if if that would be possible, and that's happening, who's to say that uh, you know people didn't go back two thousand years and change things to fit their well, yeah. agenda? Yeah, exactly. Who says that a time travel didn't, traveler didn't go back in time with a maybe modern instrumentation and and go and say, "Hey there, I'm Ball," you know, and here's what you're going to do to obey this. And then the history books basically now have these two different versions of of what Ball was. You know, I mean, anything like that like that is really possible to have happen. And see that and that's what I think about. And so when I look at these uh, ancient texts and I look at scripture or any of that stuff, which is really ancient texts, uh, when I look at this, I, I consider all those other uh, possibilities because, you know, and some people don't. Some read it and say, no, this is it. And um, no, it's not. Not if you... If if you've seen the things, and I'm not saying I'm you know I'm a hundred years old here, but if you've if you've seen and heard the things that I have for the, since I've done this show, and and you could talk with these people, I mean have just downright good talks with these people. You, I mean you get the I mean they're at least believing what they're telling us, and that's almost scary because what if they're telling the truth? What if these things have happened? What if what if somebody? What if Obama decides? You know what? I'm going to go back in time and I'm going to be Jesus this time. I mean, what if he does that? I mean, anybody. I'm just using an example. So I imagine. would create an alternative timeline, though. That's something that's really create. Or we would get into the discussion of paradoxes yeah, at that well, point. And, yeah, and again, but then you get into a lot of theory because we're, we still, we know, just don't have the facts. And I wonder if anybody has the facts, the absolute facts of how it all works. What do you think? I'm sure that they do. I, I'm sure that there are, are at least a handful out there that do, that have access to the things that have been hidden from us throughout the years, because we know that there have been. There, there's no doubt about that whatsoever. You might have a better uh, understanding, I think. I, I, yeah. I don't think anybody has a full comprehension of, you know, even the yeah. people, the proverbial top of the pyramid. I don't think they even truly understand what's no. happening. I don't either. Like we were talking about on my show earlier, the the fact is that I think that there are entities that are out there that are in either uh, outside of Earth or even like outside of this this reality and in another one that that do things to manipulate the energies that go on here in order to feed off of it. Basically, you know, to 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 do whatever it is that they want to do with with, uh, with their rituals or with their actual food. Who knows? You know, all these different things are. Are possible those things might be ones that have an understanding of how everything works because maybe they created this area for how it's going to work you know we just we don't know and that's the that's the biggest problem there's so many people out, that are out there that say well i know the answers this is the answer right here and and they are deceived <laughs> Well, yeah. Well, there is. I mean, you look at there's there's people. I mean, like uh, I was talking about Stu Webb in the beginning of the show. This is a guy that he hates gays, and he and he makes no bones about it. He hates black people. Um, he he hates Jews. You know, he thinks that they should all be killed too. Uh, he thinks all Muslims are horrible and they should all be hung and killed too. And he'll come on to your show and he'll actually say those things. And when you disagree, he'll, uh, well, I don't mean like that. It's, see, see, these are people who say things, but they don't stand by what they say because they know they're wrong. And they're hoping you go along with them and they hope that they can share the brainwashing. And and that's what it's about. I'm telling you, that's, like that guy, that's what he is. He came on my show once and, 
him and some woman, Kathy, come on, and they start talking about these effing Muslims, and now they have, and I cut them off real quick. I was like, oh, hell no, not on my show. You ain't doing that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's some people that are out there that just want to watch the world burn, and they're out to, to bring everybody that they can along for the ride. Nice Batman. Quote oh, yeah, there. and then he believes that, you know, I he like said. It. I like it. He said that homosexuals are a threat to uh, national security. He says, because imagine if Hillary Clinton's the president and she's a homosexual, now they could blackmail her. Look, they own you. When you're in this, when you're sitting in any of those seats, you're owned anyways. You Well, and, and, and I can call a timeout on that, too, because I remember one particular Washington Post article where there were male prostitutes brought in to the Bush White House for their pleasure. Anyway, well, Obama so, was one of them back in the day. Yeah, actually, yeah. yeah, you're right. Obama was one of those gay male prostitutes. Back Absolutely. In the day. And and so, now so. you see he's now he's now in that position of power because they have that over his head to be used as blackmail to roll out any time that they want to use it. Yeah, and that's it, that's how it works. That's how you know a lot of people think that the, the trafficking of children is strictly about you know, sex and it's not, you know, children are sold into sex slavery, but a lot of the times it's for drug purposes. Hey, it's billions Ryan. of dollars is being made off of this, of this network of children that are being trafficked, but it's also, you know, younger, y- younger people, you know, older than, you know, infants, but younger, you know, kids, teenagers, girls and guys that are sold into slavery through the CPS, even here in the United States. I just posted a story on that, Ryan, I, on my website. I've seen that in L.A. or yeah, Orange County. Over 5,000 children stolen by a CPS. Yes. Without warrants, without any probable cause, they just came in and took these kids. And, and, and yes. yeah, and there's a law firm that's suing uh, the CPS and, and the social workers there. And hopefully we get some of these kids back without their minds being scored by pedophile scumbags. Yeah, well, I've talked a few times about that CPS stuff, that they, they will come in, they'll they'll take the kids away, they'll put them into these group homes or these group shelters with other kids, and they will actually sell them out of that group home. Uh, there was a case, I, I talked about this uh, on my show, I think it was about two weeks ago, where um, the, the CPS workers, they came and they took a 13-year-old and a 15-year-old out of a house, a good family, you know, there was really no reason for them to be taken away, they got put into this group home. They disappeared out of the group home. The CPS workers told the family that they ran away, but they were found a year later living on the streets, and they were set. They said that they were sold out of the house, and they were not allowed to get back into it. Oh yeah, all these illegals uh, that that had these children run over the border. Uh, they're they're going to find out what the American way is about. You know, look at all those children. I mean, do you know who they were, what their names were, where they lived, or how many of them? Do you? I don't. So does the how many other being people taken do? From suburban neighborhoods, though. Yeah. Well, well yeah. Oh, absolutely. They're, I mean, they're CPS. You know, I, I, I got my opinions on on what that is. That's. I'll share my opinion. Yeah, it's it's oh, well, it's a recruitment. <laughs> It's yeah, a, it is absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's it, it's yeah, it's pimps. the very opposite of what it claims to be. They're and you know, there are some people that, that work there that really want to, I think, help, and then they get involved and they realize what a racket it is, and they 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 retire from that and they they back away from it. And they'll, I've seen you know documentaries about this where pro, you know previous agents of the CPS will talk about how. It's really just a, a, a network for trafficking children through, and they do it through orphanages, they do it for the children's schools, daycare centers, and it's all under the guise of, of course, protecting kids, but they take them in the name of protection, they pump them full of drugs, and they sell them into slavery. That's how the system That's... works. It's the same way here in America as, as it is in any other country. I don't care if it's a third world country or a first world country. What's going on here in the U.S. is no different than Lebensborn in Germany kidnapping kids, training them to be allegiant to the state and then selling them into slavery in some cases the same thing with general franco francisco's dictatorship in spain the dirty wars in argentina run by the military junta in the 1970s which at the time the head of the jesuit order and the head of the catholic church was bergoglio the current pope one of the reasons he is pope today Uh, this is very deep and it's very dark and it's very very real Ira and I were talking about this earlier, and you know that article you were mentioning, Michael, about the 5,000 kids in California, that's not even the tip of the iceberg. That's just a small fraction of what's come out. Oh, and I know. 
Wow. I mean, it's we're talking millions of children, and we're talking hundreds of billions of dollars. And you, you made a good point about the blackmail. A lot of the times, it's not that you know th this Democratic Party leader or this Republican Party leader is is a pedophile. It's that they're dragged to a party under the guise of you know you know campaign support. And when they get there, there's kids in the room that are being touched and they're photographed with this politician. And then boom, they've got the evidence to show that he's a pedophile. And if he ever does anything that goes against what they tell him to do. Boom, we hear about it in the news, and then he's taken down by the media whores who just, you know, you know, they just suck the proverbial you know what of what their you know, their masters what tell what tell them or who tell them what to say. You know, it's a big, big vicious cycle and, and at the very end of all of this, what's really crazy to me guys is that the other day we talked about that story, uh a, a bishop um I can't remember the guy's name, was it Robinson or something? I'll I'll look it up real quick, who resigned from the church because of his involvement in not telling church leaders about the lewd photographs of children being taken by a, by, a, by a reverend that worked for the church. And this reverend was later sentenced to 50 years in prison for taking lewd photos of little kids. And uh, specifically, little girls. I'm and of course, surprised. you know it's 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 done for a lot of different reasons. One of them is for blackmail, but the other one is just it, you make a lot of money. Uh, the bishop's name is Robert Finn. But the thing about this is is that, that there's more attention that is put towards the people who either don't report it or the people that talk about it. People like myself, who we get more flack for discussing it than the people do for actually doing it. And the people that give us flack are the people who know that it's happening and they'd rather attack the person exposing it because we're rattling the cage of their little closed, rigid reality that, no, this can't happen, even though they know it's happening. And since we rattle that cage, they attack us rather than the people that are touching the kids. Yeah, they no, say, no. Look at the, uh, that, uh, that's the furrows a, of worry. They, they say, no, that's not happening. Those kids... Those kids are on American Idol now. They're not. They're not being touched. Yeah, I know. It's sick. It's what well, well, you know. It, it's society. It's because people don't want to do anything about it. Well, we've got uh, these people at the helm. I mean, I don't want to just keep repeating all this, but you know, well, I've, I've got some other stories. If you want to change direction, I've got one that just happened actually. Well, okay, yeah. Well, if you have something else to say, go ahead. Oh, no, it. I was just going to, I'm just saying these people that are, are at the helm that are in charge, this is how sick they are. I mean, I we could go on and preach and preach and preach about it, but, you know. <laughs> uh, it, in the end of things, when it what it comes down to is the lunatics are running the asylum at this point, and it's been this way for a long time. Yeah, but that's because we're, we choose to look the other way, not Precisely. you and I. But you know, oh, we've been tricked, we've been duped, we've yeah. been tricked and deceived to look the other way. We've been yeah. trained and conditioned to look the other way. We've been trained to believe that what's what's insane is sane, and what is sane is actually insane. So when we ask questions, look at things logically, rationally, look at things and look for facts rather than just accepting uh, what we're told on blind faith through you know institutions that have this father figure mentality. You know, we're always trying to please authority. We're looked at as being insane for asking sane questions, and others are looked at as being sane for asking no questions and operating in, in a true sense of insanity. And yet it's people like us who have orthorexia nervosa because, hey, look, I want to buy some zucchini. Or, you know, people like us who we, we disagree with fast food or GMOs, so we want the kids in Africa to starve and die is what they tell us. You know, I mean, this is just, it's, it's propaganda, but at the same time, it's become so blatant, you really have to just close your eyes so, so overtly to it that you, you just know, you, you know what a piece of garbage you are by covering this stuff up. You've got to take action in any way, shape, or form. I mean, I don't care if it's food. Look, look for example, Tyson just announced that they're removing hormones from their meat by 2017. Okay, Wendy's, McDonald's, KFC, they've all changed their menus. McDonald's just removed seven sandwiches from their menu. Uh, they were trying to promote commercials about natural food, no antibiotics, no hormones, no artificial colors, no artificial flavors. Chipotle just removed all their GMO products from, from the store or from the, from the restaurant, supposedly. The reason for that is because people like us and the listeners out there who support shows like this are fighting 
campaign against these companies we're fighting back and refusing to purchase those items and that is true economic power we're fighting back against the very thing that enslaves us and we're making progress and so that, don't tell me that we can't do anything that we can't make a difference yeah you can make a huge difference the next time you decide what to eat for dinner you don't go to one of those places you go to a local place and if everybody starts doing that we see a big change and we're seeing that in food right now and we're also seeing it in the way that the uh the the, the other the other like topics that we deal with here are being addressed and you know I, I, I've covered the topic of child pedophilia and a lot of these child trafficking networks for years, and, and I'm working a lot with Kevin and Annette, and because of the work that people like us are doing, we're really beginning to break open stories like the one you're talking about, Michael, where the CPS, it's just open that we open, you know, they, they traffic 5,000 kids, and, and that's nothing, that's a drop in the bucket to the 300,000 that were, that were trafficked in Chile through the Catholic Church, ch children that were born they told the, the the church told their parents that the baby died and then they sold them into slavery this is documented black and white fact so the point is we can make a huge difference just by getting active and talking about this and then making a conscious decision as we shop or you know as as we entertain ourselves you know for example while while we're on air tonight while we're talking about all this I was watching a hockey game. I can watch that hockey game. I can sit back, have a good time, and still talk about free energy, still talk about what was happening in Baltimore. It's not bad to be distracted. It's only bad when you are so distracted that you can't see what the other hand is doing. That's when you get into trouble. Yeah, everything in moderation is the way that I look at it. You know, If you're going to do something, you can do it in moderation, and that's okay, but you don't have to you know, make that the end all be all of your life, essentially. There are a lot more important things to, to look at as well as, you know, being quote unquote entertained. That's right. You know, I, I have a, uh, a story here that's developing live right now. Uh, we know what's going on in Baltimore, uh, in which my personal opinion is ball or Baltimore, you could call it more, 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 more appropriately. There are apparently protesters, excuse me, protesters marching in New York right now. They march, they're marching from New York to Boston in protest of what's happening in Baltimore with police brutality. So this spread, this isn't just in Baltimore, this is in New York and Boston now. They're spreading protests. Which is exactly where I was thinking it was going to end up going next. It, it was, you know, yeah. was, we saw we things saw. in Chicago last night. I'm hearing an echo, Ryan. I think you might be having your uh, hand near the, yeah. the speaker not, there. Not this time, but let me mute. Okay. <laughs> um we see, and uh, it was kind of getting a little bit of a start last night in Chicago. I was saying that the next step is going to be to do this in a bigger city. You know, Ferguson was was the kindling to it all. The Baltimore thing is like the sticks you throw onto the fire next. Yeah, they're blowing on it, and it's going to hit a big city. When it hits them big cities, it's it's done. I mean, we have a, a serious, serious problem at that point. Not not that it isn't already, but it's it's going to get ugly. Ugly. Uh, look, I'll tell you what. I told you that they were going to use those armored vehicles for policing on the streets. I was told I was crazy. I was told that, that they're never going to use the body scanners in the airports. And lo and behold, the body scanners are now rolled out across the whole country. Lo and behold, you watch the TV right now. I bet you can still see images of these armed vehicles on the streets in Baltimore. And I'm telling you right now, this isn't a prediction because I'm smart. I'm not on a pedestal. I'm not on a, I might be on a soapbox, but I'm not on a pedestal. I'll tell you this right now. The next step in this phase, they, you talk about bringing the National Guard in. They're going to bring the military in. I, don't, I, don't, I didn't say in Baltimore. And I didn't say it was going to happen this year, but the next phase is to create a major incident. They're going to bring in, it might be another shooting, they're going to bring in the military. And the future goal is just like Henry Kissinger told you three or four or five decades ago. The next step is to bring in the blue helmets I, to police the streets. And they're already doing drills for this. I, this is I not already, a I already know the end of the world scenario. This is documented I, fact. Yeah, this I, is becoming I already know the, the next uh, target, and that's Chicago. That's my thought, too. Why, why do you guys think that? Because I, I have no info on that. Well, because well, Chicago's, Chicago's having... having... 
Okay, uh, hold on, sir. All right, it's because right. Chicago is having uh, what weekends of eighty-seven murders and forty-seven murders, and uh, the police departments are all corrupt there. The government's corrupt there, and and they're just pretty much throwing the citizens to the wolves. And they're doing this because this is next. I mean, that's and I'll tell you why I really think this is because. Uh, the mainstream media keeps bringing up Chicago. And if you read between the lines and pay attention to what they're saying, they're telling you that things are starting to stir up in Chicago. So I think Chicago's next. Yeah. For me, it's a thing of the uh, Chicago is, is really at the quote unquote crossroads. So much of, of what happens in this country goes through Chicago. It really does. That's, that's the first part. The second part is that, that the administration that's currently there still has a lot of ties into Chicago as well. And there are a lot of very loyal people to those muckety mucks that are in the administration right now that would bow down and kiss boots to, to do everything that they want them to do. So, I mean, th- th- that's, a, that's a, double, uh, a double portion, basically, of why I think... Chicago is probably going to be what blows up next. Uh, it, it, it will. It'll be hey, uh, hey, uh, population. Uh, they've they've left the uh, the black man to to fend for himself in the city, and and they'll play the the racism thing because they'll want it to stir up because they know that they could get the young people who don't even know the Constitution, don't yeah. understand history or any of you know, and those people they could get them on board with the people they put there, they plant there themselves. See, because the plants come in and start these things, and then they know that every crowd there's a little bit of stupid in every crowd. So the stupid will follow. And yeah, so, so all they have to do is get the ball rolling, and the, the people will pick it up from there and go with it. Uh, Chicago is rife with racism. I'll just put it to you that way. We, we're not all that far from Chicago here ourselves, and, and it, is, it is rife with racism. It's unfortunate, but anybody that lives there or that lives in that area, you, you guys know it is the truth. And it's sad. Hey, but You know what else, Ira? You and I are talking about some of these images from Baltimore, and the same thing was in Ferguson. Um, you know, these people walking around with shirts on that say Black Lives Matter. And I have to sit here with my jaw dropped and I have to pick it up and put it back and, and, and rewire it because I'm thinking, but Black Lives Matter. I mean, I understand where you're coming from to a certain extent. You want to bring attention to this problem. Oh, no, they all, changed all, all it now. Lives matter, they not cha- just Black Lives. They changed it now, Ryan, to be more politically correct. And, and whoever's behind it had them change it to All Lives Matter. That, well, that's what I'm saying. That's that's. I mean, I don't even like the slogan. I'm just saying, if we're going to have that conversation, it's all lives matter, not Black Lives Matter. No, you know, particular, um, you know, special uh, privileges for any group, white or not. It doesn't matter. And you know, it's the same thing. You know, you start talking. You know, people say, "Oh, you, well, you're white, so you don't have any ground to stand on." Well, it's the same thing when I talk about Israel and people say, well, you're not Jewish, so you don't know. And then, you know, I find, you know, rabbis and other Jews who talk about what happens in Israel. And then, you know, the same people that told me you're not a Jew, you don't understand. They look at the rabbi and they say, oh, you're a self-hating Jew because self-hating you don't believe Jew. what I believe. It's all brainwashing. And, and you know what, as far as I'm concerned, you remember the, I remember the Occupy Wall Street protest. I went to one of them in Orlando. It was just absolutely, you know, the most ridiculous, stupid thing I ever went to. Just a bunch of idiots that didn't know anything about banking. And I go there, and there's a couple people that didn't know, but a lot of them that were just really dumb. And uh, this, it, nothing happened in Orlando, but the ones in New York, I remember the Black Bloc Anarchist Group with ties to the NYPD and the federal government were inciting violence in that area and that was promoted on TV saying that the Occupy protesters were violent and this was a need to shut the protest down. I know for a fact, I've read the black and white documents from the Department of Justice, that they had a a direct hand in the Sanford riots and protests in Florida. That was only 15 minutes from where I was. I, I even went down to that courthouse where that trial took place. And then we know George Soros literally funded the protests in Ferguson. So I can as, get, as well as New York. As, well, there you go. Well, the, which one? The Occupy protests? No, the ones for uh, Eric Garner. Oh, that's right. That's right. So I know thirty-three. Well, how much was it in New York, Ira? It was thirty-three million in Ferguson. Was that the same part? I believe of- it was about twenty million for uh, New York. Yeah. 
So look at this. He just had 50, 50 plus million dollars just for protests to push some political agenda. You've got kids starving in the street and people are upset because Whole Foods is feeding the, the law enforcement and not the kids in the city that are starving and all these major distractions. Why isn't anybody pissed at George Soros for funding this racial hatred and tension? The main goal of all of this is a problem reaction solution to bring the military in and they don't have to openly declare martial law. Martial law was declared in Boston for God's sake when they lost lock the city down. Baltimore, it's the same situation. We're heading towards totalitarianism on a state that I can guarantee you the Nazis couldn't have imagined in their wildest dreams. And I can guarantee you what's happening in Baltimore right now is being funded by these exact same people. Well, listen, I have, I have one quick quote for you that, that I think is absolutely relevant as far as George Soros is concerned. You ready for this? Shoot. Go ahead. Ira, <laughs> I, I think I think, I think. Uh, that that is so funny. For some reason, my uh, my computer just muted itself when I tried to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is proceeding as I have foreseen. Every time I think George Soros <laughs> is the Galactic Emperor, man. Uh, was that was that, was that was that Obama, Obama? In, Congress? in Congress? Was that Star Wars? Wars. That was Star Wars, but you may as well call it Obama. <laughs> yeah, that was the Emperor. I recognized the yeah. voice. Um, yeah, they're actually in the new Star Wars movie. Apparently, there's a, there's a health care system called uh, Palpatine Care. <laughs> uh, every, time I, every time I think of George Soros, all I can think of is the Galactic Emperor. It, it looks like him and everything. I mean, the guy, the, he's so far into the manipulation of all of this stuff that goes on and people just they they gloss right over everything that this guy is doing like you were mentioning the the amount of money that he's been responsible for funding into all of this stuff what what purpose is there okay you guys have to understand it's either it's these people they only do one uh, these things for for one of two reasons basically either because they're going to gain power or they're going to get money and he's not going to spend $50 million for any kind of altruistic reasons. He's never done it in the past. He's never going to do it. Profit or power. That's the only reasons why these people are doing this. So what are they going to gain out of funding these kind of protests going on? You see, that's the questions that have to be asked. Who benefits out of this stuff? Well, Iver, didn't he fund some of the uh, what you call terrorist training in um, – uh, was it the southern part of Russia where the Sarniev brothers came from? He funded the, those training camps for the terrorists through the U.S. federal government and the Obama administration that okayed it. The same Sarniev brothers that supposedly you know detonated these pressure cookers in, in Boston. I mean, it was the same guy behind the funding of that as well. Absolutely. You are 100% correct. So, again, who benefits? What is he going to be gaining out of all of this stuff? You see, this, this guy is yeah, one of but- those that's behind the elite right but what we got to remember is that these guys wouldn't be doing any of this if that white house wasn't allowing it so when it comes down to it congress and the white house is responsible for every damn bad thing that happens in this country because they're not they're allowing it they're setting it up they're letting these scumbags like monsanto uh and soros and and said they're letting them get their way they're letting them rape the people so i think if we want to stop it there's one good way to set an example but i'll warn you (laughs) it'll get bloody it'll get ugly and it'll probably last a while Yes. Well, I mean, that might even be what's coming next is what you're insinuating. I've talked about it, too. But, you know, I, I disagree with you. I don't think Congress has any authority or any power here. Congress has been dissolved the way I see it. The Senate has been dissolved the way that I see it. I mean, this oh, is no, literally I like think, I replay no, the, this con- is the galactic emperor. Con- Congress is, is part of the problem. They, they're, they're put there to make us believe that we've got someone fighting for us. When uh, Look, when you sit there and you're silent, you're just as guilty. Congress sitting there silent, even if they have no control. The fact is, they're letting us think that they do, and and they're not doing what, what, what they were put there to do. So as far as I'm concerned, they should hang with the rest of them. Yeah. Congress does People. nothing but vote on giving themselves a higher pay raise, or they basically support the very agenda at hand. And when you get a congressman who doesn't play ball, like let's say Ron Paul, 
hell, we'll, they'll just paint him as a terrorist and a radical, and uh, he'll be demonized by the mainstream media. That's like Rand Paul out there now. I'm sorry whether the guy's a good guy it. or not. You know what? I, I'm not. I'm not wasting my energy on no more of these dirtbags because you know what? If you are real, you're not going to get in there. If you really want to make change, it's not going to be becoming president. It's going to be joining us and let's go and let's change it. We need to remove these people. That's the bottom line. We need to demand that our sheriffs and our military act now and arrest these people. And if 300 million of us took to the street and told them this is what we want, I have a feeling that that something would happen. Am I? Oh, well, there, there's something will happen. They'll have the military out there on the street to greet you. I can guarantee you that. Well, then guess funny. what? Then our military has a choice to make because I'll tell you what, I'm not backing down. And if they want to shoot me, shoot me, but I'm shooting back. So, you know, and I would, you know, if that happened, then our military is useless to us. If they're that brainwashed that they would fire on, on the people here. And, and, you know, I know what they're, here's what I think. I think they're, they're spreading them thin here in the United States so they could bring the foreign troop in. Now they're the ones that would shoot on us, I think. But if our own troops did it, well, then let it be war because them bastards need to be taken out if that's the way they're going to play the well, game. The, 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 there, there are some troops. There's a lot of, I think, heads of certain military divisions who have been let go because they ref, they refuse to even, you know, acknowledge the fact that, you know, it should even be a discussion of firing on American citizens because the president gives orders. And they do this under the guise of, oh, the president, he's the leader. You have to listen to what he says. It's like, no. Because in this country, you're supposed to follow what the Constitution says, and you're not supposed to listen to the president if he gives an unconstitutional order. And what people forget, I think, and really don't understand is if we really study history, and Ira, you and I talked about this on your show tonight, and you see like how obsessed people are, sickly obsessed with the the freaking royal family you know we fought a tyrannical king george supposedly to get away from that to found our own nation to declare independence just so we can go to the supermarket and we can ooh and ah over the new baby that's being born and the the thing that about that that that's really relevant is the fact that this this country never had independence and what we see as as a congress as a senate as a system of checks and balances that the only thing that's really taught in school before you go into the real world is propaganda it's brainwashing and this country is a corporation that's been established under international law the irs is established to collect corporate gains tax we are a slave population and you go ahead you go out there and you protest and you see what happens we see it in baltimore and you're going you see what's happening in new york and boston you're going to see this continue to happen and the people behind the violence that's initiated are the very people that are trying to keep you oppressed this country is not free and if you people don't start that not the listeners who are really active in this but the people that might just be listening turning the channel you don't start getting active i'm not giving a timeline but things are going to continue to get worse there's no deadline to this but things are going to continue to get worse and worse and worse so a decade ago when you think about you know looking outside and you don't see any cameras really out on the you know the buildings and on the street lights and then you fast forward to now where there's 12 cameras on every pole and you know they're force vaccinating people and oh, the oh, Ryan, they're, they're, they're also going to they're also going to put the cameras on the police officers in Baltimore, too, because that's part of the agreement with the mayor there and Obama, and it's part of an initiative to get... And they say that they're going to have to spend more tax money to to have a place to record and that's save this bold. data. That's, that's, that's ridiculous. No, and the reason they're going to do it is because this way they can have a better... Uh, police state they could watch people even better things that the cop might miss while the camera might pick up and uh and and what they want to do is federalize the all the police departments in the country that's the agenda that's the truth i've got proof of it that's what they want to do and they're gonna do it because people people aren't doing nothing there's your citizens uh what is it a citizen the citizens police force the, the military that obama has as a, as a private army and i'll tell you what that might sound crazy i just read an article i'm going to see if i can pull it up again i read an article last night ira and i were talking about it where um they were saying that was it five thousand troops from the national guard were sent in to baltimore but there were also two thousand 
federal troops that were sent in. Well, and they, they didn't specify National Guard. They said 2,000 federal troops, which I'm assuming is either the U.S. military or a private army that's been established that we were told wasn't going to happen. Yeah, I know that there was, uh, according to the mainstream media, they said a 1,000 police officers were sent in uh, last night, and then the National Guard was there. I know that. As far as that, I don't know what else, because like I had it muted most of the time. I would just look to see what was happening, like actions. No, I'm not listening to their propaganda, because I don't want, you know, I'll keep the brainwashing out of my subconscious. <laughs> it's a good way to do it, yeah. You guys are you guys are right with all of this. I mean, it, it really is an insane situation that we're in, and it really is just getting worse. I mean, you you were talking there about the the cameras on the cops, and and how that article that you found. Uh, well, it wasn't even an article; it was the um, the the. Uh, it's a it's an actual uh, PDF well, uh, document. The the memo from yeah. the the mayor herself, Stephanie Roland Black or Blake there in there you know begging for money basically to be funded but now you see this event happening here now she's going to get her funding now she's now they're going to get their funding for exactly what it is that they wanted and i'm going to post that document on the website i didn't get to it tonight i've had adonna and bruce here and we've been doing some things and so i've kind of slacked off in that area but uh tomorrow i will get that uh posted on the website and everybody could check it out for themselves yeah, hey, something else that's an article here just a just a just a few minutes ago myself the the Baltimore mayor ordered cops let them loot its only property. Hmm. Well, you know, let them shoot. It's you know only self defense. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And this is after you know last night I played you that clip of of the mayor herself coming out and saying you know we backed off to give them room to destroy if they wanted to destroy, and then later, like 12 hours later, saying, I never said that, I never said that. Well, <laughs> she she's part of the the whole agenda with Obama and, and militarizing the police force. They, they had this plan. This is, this is not new. Like she, they've said, they've even given you hints on the mainstream media when they say, this isn't something that just started a week ago. This has been going on. This is something that's been, been, been building up for a decade now. You're damn right it has been building up for a decade they've had this plan and uh so there you have it and uh you know that's why they let people destroy that's why they wanted to get better the police figure hey let's keep the police back they don't get involved hopefully you know people start shooting each other and we can get a civil war started here yeah yeah that's, exactly uh, and then the police they would they want to make it where you'll beg the police to come Oh, yep. please, please come save me. That's what they want. They want you to beg them. I'm not going to beg. You know what? Any you know what? riots ever happen here in my neck of the woods and people are coming with garbage pails to throw through my window, I'm shooting them. And it's I'm just, shooting to kill. Well, it's just like 9-11, the exact same thing. They they went through this event. They, they caused it to happen. And suddenly people said, oh, please save us. Please save us. Take away our rights. We'll give them to you. But please save us from these evil terrorists. And, and when, they, and they when Granny them. says, what the hell are you doing banging on my door? They smack the hell out of her and take her gun from her. Yeah, exactly. Listen, I have that clip, actually. Let me play it here real quick. It's, it's like 20 seconds long, just All so right. that people can hear it. Because this, this is really critical for people to understand how they work, okay? We also gave those who wished to destroy space to do that as well. And we uh, worked very hard to, uh, to keep that balance and, and to put ourselves in the best position to de-escalate. And that's what you saw. Listen, I am going to protect people's right to protest. The fact that people exploited that does not mean that I, I do not have an obligation to protect people's right to protest. I never say, nor would I ever say, that we are giving people space to destroy our city. So my words should not be twisted. Lie, 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 lie. <laughs> well, that's what they do. I mean, you know, they get in office and they lie. They're they're all puppets. They all do what they're told. They're all, hey, I'll I'll help you with your evil, uh, but you got to back me up with mine. Together, we'll rule really, the world. You really start thinking. Did, did, did she say that? Even though you got the video, it's like Dick Cheney. They got weapons of mass destruction. 
And then uh, there's no weapons of mass destruction. So uh, Dick Cheney, what the hell are you talking about? And he well, says, uh, well, I never said that. Well, yeah, you did. Here's the clip. They got weapons of mass destruction. Well, That's it, not what I meant. He also said, of course, the orders still stand. Yep. You know, of course. No, you're not going to shoot the plane down. We got plans for all that crap. Mind There's your one business. last article I found here, you guys, uh, I wanted to throw towards you. It is uh, U.S. military self-steering bullets that can hit moving targets. Did you hear this, that the uh, DARPA DARPA developed? Oh, yeah, yeah. I think I think I touched on that, uh, it might have been a couple weeks back, about this bullet. Um, yeah, I mean, it could, it could, it could actually literally be the magic bullet now that they, that's, about. that's exactly what I said on my show, that this must be the bullet that killed Kennedy, <laughs> yeah. the technology, and they're just rolling it out for us like six decades later. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So now they can say, see, we've, we've had that technology and this is the, it goes, it goes right in line with them saying that, uh, that the military is at least 50 years ahead of time. Well, you know, yeah, well, that's, that's they, right. Yep. They make up their theories and then uh, they wait 40, 50 years until the technology catches up or until they can come out with it. And they say, oh, see, see, we could do it. Yeah, but could you do it 50 years ago? Uh, you know, where's that magic bullet? Uh, yep. It, the, it's just like the hijacking of, uh, you know, car you know, planes, but cars as well. You know, I, I personally think. Diana's car was hijacked and it was ran into the tunnel. Oh, and I gosh. also think that Michael Hastings' car was hijacked and it was ran into that tree and, you know, it, it exploded. I mean, I, there's just, and even even one of the officials in the Bush administration, a former official, I think it was uh, Mike, was it Michael Clark? I can't remember his name. He comes out and says the same thing that, yeah, these cars are, are susceptible to people hacking into them. Well, now, what, which is controlling it? Them. Now, which is it now? Because I've heard that Michael Hastings was loaded with cancer, and then I hear that now I hear that he's crashed into a tree or whatever. So, no, Michael, Michael Hastings was the Rolling Stones reporter, I believe, and he. Oh, that, we might be talking. Oh, I'm, ta- I'm thinking of somebody else. Never mind. Okay, okay. I'm thinking a guy. Everyone says that uh, uh, he had the information on Planet X, and that's why they hit him with cancer or whatever. Uh, I I got no clue what you're talking about on that one. <laughs> oh jeez, I can't. Uh, something Hastings. I forget now. Anyways, I'm sure someone in the chat probably knows. They'll post it. But uh, but guys, we're almost out of time here. Was it? Wait, was it? No, not. I knew a Brian Hastings growing up, but I I don't know. Anyways, guys, uh, we're we're right at the end here. So uh, as always, uh, you know, anything you want to get out there uh, to close shop tonight, by all means, go ahead. I'll be back tomorrow night, and oh, let me pull out my calendar here. Tomorrow night, I have uh, we've got some ghost hunters joining us. Summer Wind Restoration. They're going to talk about uh, apparently this uh, spooky place that they're. Uh, restoring and um, I don't have all the stuff in front of me but it's going to be paranormal nevertheless and uh, for some reason this month we've got a lot of paranormal booked and it wasn't planned that way it just it just fell that way Uh, so um, uh, hopefully we have a a a better variety uh, coming up well as a matter of fact we do have a better variety coming up okay so uh, that's what we're doing Thursday Friday, I've got uh, David Yorth, and uh, that's also uh, along the paranormal uh, type uh, of topic. And uh, so then after that, it should start turning around a little bit. Uh, not that the paranormal is bad, but I don't usually do back to back to back paranormal shows because you can only talk about the ghost so long, and you've got to get to reality a little bit. But uh, all right, so uh, guys, what, what would you like to finish with? You want to start, Ira? Sure. Um, okay, so tomorrow night on Brothers at Arms, Joe and I are going to be going a little bit more into the Baltimore stuff as well as some other topics that we've found that are really, really interesting. Be sure to tune in to that 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on late night in the Midlands.com. Uh Friday, I have an interview with a, a lady named Landy Cryer. We're talking about uh, vaccines and the vaccine agenda and the horror show that it is on monday i have maggie hart and chris perry coming with me there we're gonna continue our vision of the end and it turned out to be a very very interesting interview and make sure guys donate and subscribe to late night in the midlands it is essential do it now 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 we need your help please please if you get anything out of the shows here please go 
and donate and subscribe. Right. And folks, we are getting ready to add more shows. And I'm telling you, I'm aiming to fill this time so that, you know, you get my show at nine, you get, you know, you won't hear my show over and over once we get it full, filled up here. And we're, we're getting there. We're, we're about to get there. So if you have a show, if you've got a talent and you want to bring it to the LM Radio Network, contact me at mv at late night in the midlands dot com. Preferably, you know, uh, you know, well, definitely preferably that you, you're going to be honest in what you do and you'll make it just fine here. Just be yourself. And uh, uh, so that's what we're looking for. So uh, get a hold of me if you're interested. Otherwise, we're going to eventually we'll be filled up here and there'll be no room for you. So. Uh, contact me if you do have an interest and we'll see about uh, taking a listen to you and maybe getting you added. I know that we're going to have some other shows that are being actually going to be sent to us from another network. I don't want to get too deep into it right now um, because it's not official, but uh, but uh, they're kind of over getting overloaded and uh, so, you know, but look, nobody's just going to hand me off their crap. It's going to be good or it's not going to be here. So, um, despite anything. So, you know, we want, we want good shows. We want, uh, real people, uh, covering real issues. You know, if you get guests, that's great. Uh, if you're live, that's great. If it's recorded, that's great. We just want it good shows. So, uh, with that folks, I'm done. Keep your eyes posted, keep your ears posted, and uh, I'll be back with you tomorrow night for late night in the Midlands. And, uh, I'll say good night, everybody. Uh, unless you guys have anything else, that'll do it. Keep yeah. safe and have fun. Thank you so much for listening. I have my special edition of The Secret Teachings airing this Saturday. Uh, I believe it will be at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and that will be on the subject of what's happening in Baltimore, but a very esoteric approach to it. And then Sunday I have Courtney Brown from the Farsight Institute. We're talking about remote viewing of Cydonia on Mars. All right. Well, everybody, have a great night. And again, uh, we'll be back with you tomorrow night. There's no word on whether the crashes might have been some sort of act of terrorism, but the FBI is investigating that possibility. Good evening. Tonight, I can report to the American people and to the world. The United States has conducted an operation that killed life, Osama liberty, in the pursuit of happiness, leader of Al-Qaeda. It's about time some of you got acquainted with the real hard the world truth. We have unconfirmed reports this morning that a plane has crashed into one of the towers of the World Trade Center. It will be those behind the New World Order. Shortly afterward, another plane hit the other tower, causing another massive explosion. Another social illusion, social engineering project.